to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV episode 55. Holy crap. 55. Kind of in between both our ages. As always. In between nothing of my age. My age is well <laughs> over that. So. I'm saying between you and I. The difference. Right? Close? Sort of? Anyway, Scott Johansson. Lovely uh, co-host. Math. That, that's, that's, that's what they want. Model Club Math with Jason Walker. Oh, God, I hate you. Already, I'm hating you. We're, what, 30 seconds I in. warned you, what, Good 20 God. seconds ago. I hate it when you get rest. It's the worst. <laughs> oh, ah. I feel good. I feel good. Uh, Tonight's going to be a good show. It is going to be a good show. Uh, I'm Jason Walker, and as I already said, Scott Johansson. Uh, we have an amazing show, actually. Hey, wait, we just had the ghost went by. Wait till you, wait till no, you edit. You see those the ghost are your skin by. cells drifting off your scalp, I think. Um, we have Joe Ladotti. We had a great interview. Holy Joe cow, is it cool? It was awesome. So stay tuned for that. Got that coming up here in a little bit. Some stuff Scott didn't know. Some stuff I didn't know. And just, you know, great all around dude. Some cool stuff in there. How are you, Scott? How's life? Life is grand. Life is grand? Holy shit. Why? Because it's a. Oh. Hold on. Paul Gill's calling me. Oh, Paul Gill's calling. <laughs> hey, you're live on our recording. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was just calling, but you already answered Jason. So that's put, all. Put it close enough to where he sounds like the the uh, the peanuts, the adult. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, I'll talk to you. Okay, where were we? Where were we? We were at. I don't know. Joladotti. Joladotti. Yeah, we already said that part. If you want to send us an email, the email is modelclubtv at gmail.com, modelclubtv at gmail.com. And if you would like to leave us a voicemail, since it seems like CG Blade and only one other person who shall remain nameless leaves us a voicemail, 708-816-4299. Leave us a voicemail. We'd love it. 708-816-4299. Are you referring to that house ape, Brian Clark? Oh, yeah, that guy. That didn't come to our cookout? Yeah, okay. we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll keep see. them short. Keep them short and sweet. Not rambling and long. What we need. Short and sweet, like most of... Normal. Like me. Okay. <laughs> so, so our cookout was a success. Yes. It was a, you didn't it was seem very sure about that. What are you talking about? Well, it's that pause. You ruined my deck. I didn't ruin your deck. We'll get into that. You're, you you're, you're such a jag. <laughs> such a jag. Okay, we're going to get some opinion here. Okay, can, can, we thank our, can we thank our people first before? Okay. Yes, first, why don't you do that? Thank you if to you Scott. If you can even remember their name. <laughs> thank you to Scott Johansson for having it at his house and letting us come over there. And to Joanne for preparing a lot of this stuff. And thank you to our guests, Dan Cherney, Greg Damian, David Horvath, and Lois Horvath for coming pretty far as well. Dan, I think, came the furthest, right? From Ohio. Yep. And his girlfriend was there as well, but she was there. She kind of went gift uh, shopping <laughs> while we hung out. Mm -hmm. uh, Vince Simonelli. Vince was there. And Greg Damian was there. And Roy Kirchhoff. He came from pretty, pretty far, too, up in Detroit area. So we want to thank everybody for coming. We really, 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 really appreciate it. And it was awesome. We had a great time. Next time. We'll do it at my house, so you can. Yeah, but there's some things missing in my basement. So oh, really? Someone took something? To yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to houses. No, there's not. <laughs> there's not. So that's awesome. Uh, special thanks to Dan Cherney. He brought a lot of stuff to show. Yes, uh, he did. He, and he yeah. brought some stuff to sell. I bought some. Ended up spending money at the barbecue. Bought some kits from him, and he gave us a bunch of great. There were some great gifts from a lot of people. He did you bring us. Yeah, he did bring us some gifts. We got gifts from a lot. Yeah, it was I really got cool. From, uh, Dan, <laughs> this uh, Jason Walker T-shirt. <laughs> That's a Brian Clark shirt, dude. What are you talking about? Okay. So, uh, and then yeah, I yeah, you got, oh, the David. foot. You got to show the foot. So David, because he's such a great guy. 
he made me this foot. <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to hold it up. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> there's kind of glaring, but there's fungus there. Okay, there's fungus among us. It's awesome. So, uh, and you think he could have stained the wood, you know? But anyway. Uh, oh, um, man. You are so picky. No, I love this thing. It's up on my, it's up <laughs> on my shelf of honor. Hmm. I don't even have anything on the shelf of honor. I don't yes, you do. Anything. That's I a do. lie. See, right away you lie. What's on the shelf of honor from me? You painted um a dark. Oh Knight yeah, that's right. And Joker uh, Eagle Moss figure. Yeah, that's right. That is true. You broke the Batman, and yeah. All right, let's get on with it. Let's hear what you got to complain about. Well, the barbecue was great. Everybody was great. Um, we told some great stories. Some not model related. Yeah, oh, there were a lot of not model related stories. I probably told way too much personal stuff about myself, but that's okay. Yes. Um, Dan Cherney, anyone, if you get a chance to sit down with Dan Cherney, dude's been everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he's, that he, guy has stories. So, I love his story that he got kicked out of Bill Waterson's house. That was, that was, I think, <laughs> my favorite. But, I, like, um, I like the Russian sub story. That's my favorite. I'll leave it to that. Other people can, you know, if you ever get to meet him. Ask him about those stories. Holy well, crap. Let me, let me tell my story. All right, here we go. My barbecue story. And I would like people to comment. And <laughs> I'm going to twist is, my mustache villain style for who's this. right and who's wrong? <laughs> You're wrong. Okay. So let's start <laughs> off with last summer. I bought a really nice $850 Weber Genesis grill. Okay. It's so, only what? Three burners? It's $850 and it's got a 10 year warranty. So when your Menards grill disintegrates after a year, like my last I've one, had did. It for, it's not a Menards grill. So anyway, you got a, you got a, a burner on the side for frying pans. You got one of those. No, I I've never used, have you ever used it? Cause I've never, yeah, used I do. It. I use it all the time to do eggs that I put on my burgers. The last one I had, my wife started it with the lid down and burnt the paint off a brand new grill. So, um, Oh, and I'm the problem. Okay. So, but anyway, So my, my friend Rick was over because he usually comes over when I have a cookout. And so he came, he's not part of the whole modeling nerd community, but he enjoyed himself. He did enjoy himself actually. And, um, so I bring him over cause he usually helps me cook. We're a good team. Oh, so he's like your indentured servant. He like cooks for you. No, he's a friend. Oh, okay. He's not a scorekeeper like you. Okay. <laughs> so. So I figure we're going to cook. Well, at some point, this mental defective host <laughs> of this podcast says to me, can I cook? So I thought it was important to him. He wanted to cook. He liked to cook. I, I cook said, at oh, all my what? barbecues. You go. You cook. Okay. So he cooks. And at one point, his lovely lady, Jamie, says to me, hey, your dog is licking grease up on the deck. Is that okay? And I said, yeah, it's not going to hurt him. And she's like, well, I don't want him to get diarrhea or anything. And I figure, you know, when you grill, you might get a drop or two of grease, right? Well, the next morning I go out and in front of my grill, there are spots everywhere on my deck. Okay. It looked like the urinal floor at a short dick convention. All right, is what it looked like. Okay. Now, one last drop hit the urinal. So I start to deduce what happened here. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what happened here. Oh, you tell me. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Again, this mental defective house <laughs> ape individual. <laughs> house ape. Okay. Yes. Took the spatula and he was, well, first of all, I want to start by saying he starts the cooking off by bitching about the grill. Because the hot dogs can fall through. The, the hot dogs can uh, fall. They, they fall through okay. the grill line. The, then you turn the them grate. the other way. No, okay. but then they extend too far over. You don't get a full grill mark on those hot dogs. So what do you think people are counting? Hmm, they're grill marks. Short, a, grill, right? a hot dog grill should have the grill marks in the length of the hot dog at least. For fuck's sake. Turn it diagonally then, dick. Then it rolls. It doesn't roll if it's diagonally. Mm, it rolls. So anyway, so he's bitching about that. Whatever. I'd let it go. Go go cook on your $3 Menards grill. I don't care. So 
apparently he took the spatula and as he was turning the grease, you know, and the burgers get grease on them, you know. Um, so most normal people when they grill, this is what I want people to comment. Now. Most normal people when they grill, there's shelves on each side of the grill. One on the left in case you're left-handed, one on the right, I guess, in case you're right-handed. Both in case you're ambidextrous. I don't know. So you, you flip your burgers and you set your spatula down. You would have bitched well, about grease there. No, I wouldn't have, because that's easy to wipe up. Instead, this house ape, mental defective freakazoid, decides to stand there with this grill, with the spatula dripping I, grease. I so talk. he not only stands there with it dripping grease, he talks Italian. Now, for those of you that don't know what talks Italian is, he starts talking with his hands. So what's going on with the spatula? He's fucking flicking grease around like the Pope is spreading holy water. I am Catholic. I am Northern Italian. <laughs> All the way to my back door. Now, my back door is a good seven, eight feet. So not only is he talking Italian, he's wandering the deck while he's talking Italian, spreading grease everywhere. He will never cook at my house again. I'm just saying. Do you? Okay. How long have you had that grill? Uh, a little over a year. How long have you had the deck? Um, seven years. And you care about your deck? Does my deck look unkept? I, I'm just saying. I mean, why I have realize you, you, why you, have you, you if this is such a concern, why have you not purchased a grill? Okay, mat? I'll tell you why I haven't purchased a grill mat because I haven't had a need for a grill mat because I don't grill like a moron. I grill on concrete. I grilled in the city. I grilled on my driveway. I don't give a shit. Okay, just because you have problem. a fancy deck okay. doesn't okay. So, stop me from talking with the spatula. So because I have a fancy deck, that gives you... You should protect your fancy deck with no, a grill mat. You should respect where you're at. When you go I into was. a fancy bathroom, do you piss on the floor? Sometimes, no. yes. <laughs> there's tr Cause, there's cause, strips. Because <laughs> you're a mental defective house ape moron. So anyway, I would like comments on who's right and who's wrong here. There's nothing to be right or wrong about. Yes, you put the spatula down, or don't you? That's I walk I around with a spatula. That's, I don't care what you do. You eat out of the garbage, too. Okay, you fish toothpaste out of the toilet. Okay, so I want to know what normal people do. <laughs> I, okay, so the default is I'm not normal. That's your point? That's why you're never cooking in my house. <laughs> we'll do it at my house next year. You can drip grease wherever you want. How about that? Yeah, well, everyone will be hiding under the tables so they don't get shot at your house. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, moving on. Good grief. It's, There's nowhere to throw flurrings at your house. Yeah, you just got to find something. You got to find something all the time. No, no you got to do something all the time. Okay? You can't just think normal. Okay? And I'm not even going to go into the fact that how many people do we have? Ten? Yeah, about that. Okay, so we have 10 people, and this idiot wants to go to Costco and buy shit in bulk, like, you know, 38 brats and hey, 24 what, burgers, hey, it and it's like... It worked. You know. The burgers we had just enough. We, there was a few left over. They were good burgers. I gave you some extra burgers. Yeah, the black anus burgers. I appreciate it. <laughs> you love your black anus. <laughs> well, and we wouldn't have had any food if Clark showed up. Let's not... I thought, ourselves. you know, I thought he was going to surprise us. So that's why I got extra food. Yeah. <laughs> we set up a trough for him just in case he showed up. He could have licked the grease off. Uh, all right. Moving on. Thank you to everybody that came. We are planning on doing it again. It was a good time. It was a really good time. And I, yeah. It was unseasonably hot. I will say that. It was yeah. unseasonably warm. Yeah, it was. This but as yesterday was freezing. Off, there was a nice breeze. Yeah. And in Jason's defense, when one of my umbrellas blew away, he did run to the rescue and uh, <laughs> save the umbrellas. And the table. I'm surprised that table didn't shatter, actually. So, so thank you to everybody. Again, awesome time. Uh, we have you got emails. pictures you're going to post here? Or what? Uh, I have one picture somewhere. I, even, I don't know where I put it. It's on the Discord channel. I'll go find it. Whose phone did we even take it with? 
<laughs> I thought you said you took David pictures. Horvath. No, David Horvath took a bunch of pictures. I know he did. I'll get some from there. I'll put them up here somewhere. <laughs> I'm no. really bad at pictures. The Northwest Modeler guys, they have their get together. They take a group picture. Did we uh, think to do that? We no. did. We why. did take a group picture, didn't no. we? No, because you were too busy throwing no. grief. No, I don't think you remember. We did take a group picture at some point. I don't know who has it though. I think Horvath has it. <laughs> we'll I don't find think out. Group picture. We're gonna there find is. out. We took it in the garage. Where was I? You were there. I, we'll figure it out. If there's, pic- if there's pictures, man. they'll be in this area. <laughs> Wait, I'm on the wrong light setting. Ah, there we go. Oh boy. Oh, so much. Better. I think you really washed out. I didn't like yeah, it. You were. You look. You look uh, pecked. Peaked. Pecked. You know, blood transfusion. That's what you needed. Um, real quick, Wait. things I watched. Did I talk about black phone last time? What? Give me that in English. <laughs> I talk about black phone last time. <laughs> I don't know. No, okay. That's a pretty good movie. It's uh your wife would like it actually. It's a little kidnapper movie set in the 70s when uh Scott Johansson was a little boy. Yeah, it's right up uh your time frame. Jason so. Walker was in the sack. No, I was it was uh set in 77, so I was 3. So I'm good. I should have put you in the sack and uh, I've been watching Westworld. I uh, I'm it's losing me. I can't it's hard to even watch at this point. And then I just finished What We Do in the Shadows, the new season, which is excellent. Again, I, I will keep recommending that until this show is over with. Is there an episode where they throw grease in somebody's deck? Mm, no surprised no there's a this is a good season <laughs> i'll leave it at that great uh the other thing i found is one of the coolest things i've seen on the internet in a long time uh it is an, a comedian who does impressions named charlie hopkinson and he does these deep fake things where he takes the real actor's face and puts it over his face while he's doing the impression and this guy, Charlie Hopkinson, does the best dead on Gandalf. He, like, it is uh, like uncanny how well it is. And so it's Gandalf watching the new Lord of the Rings show. Uh, I'll put a link here. Go over to his YouTube channel. He does it with other stuff as well. <laughs> and it's all super funny. And check it out. It is fantastic. You don't even have to be a Lord of the Rings guy. He does some Marvel stuff too, it looks like, in Game of Thrones. So check him out. Charlie Hopkinson, he has way more viewers than we do. <laughs> I don't know why we're sending people there, but wow. It's really, really, really good. So, that's the things I've watched. Oh, you watch God. anything, Scott? Yeah. Sorry, you were boring me. Um, no. No, didn't think so. All right, giveaways. Giveaway. We have some giveaways. We have some giveaways. Uh, bear with me while we set up the wheel of doom. I gotta figure this out. Apparently, last episode we missed a name or yeah, two. Yeah, I let me go back to the regular camera. So I missed a name or two, and there's a new policy that's been in place now because of this. I will only, and I am sorry to the person I missed. Uh, I will only accept YouTube comment entries. No more word of mouth or email. I only want to look in one place. I don't have time to go everywhere. I have, I'm very sorry that I missed that name. And then I think I missed a name in... He Actually, he said his name got like thrown out when I pressed the shuffle button. It was there, and then it was gone. And then so... Then he should have held on tighter. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. So I, I missed a couple names in the giveaway. Growing pains with the wheels of fun, or whatever we want to call them. Um, we're going to start this week with I'm gonna pull this up. the Jaeger Army card. For the Jaeger Army card, we only had Kevin. I don't even want to pronounce your last name. So, Kevin, uh, Norris is gone. That's not really a name that's in there. That's going to remind me what it's for. So, we have Kevin Deghen Colby. I don't even know. That might be right. Jim McFarland and Scale Modeling HQ. We are shuffling and we are spinning. And here we go. For the Jaeger Army card. 
and it will be Scale Modeling HQ. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. All right, I got to adjust this window here. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry, this, this card's got just a hair of a nick in it here. Uh-oh, defective? Yeah, that's the way they come in the mail. The post office has a ball, so. But whatever, it's free, so. True. Costing me a stamp. All right. Okay. Give me your name, though, and your address, and I'll get it mailed out to you. Scale modeling. All right, next window. Closing that one, disappeared. Next up is the Devil Man that I'm giving away bum, bum, bum. from Lance Woods. Devil Man. No instructions. It is a modeling project. We had a lot of entries for this. And let me see if I can pull this window up appropriately. He's got the devil in his heart. Oh, you're a good singer. Well, I'm a better singer than you are a griller, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't see me spitting all over. All right, here we go. Got okay. a lot of people for this one. And again, I don't think there's anyone in this wheel that won last week, so we are, I think, good. Here we go. For the Devil Man. Titan Find. Titan Find has won the Devil Man. Let me get this noted. Well done. Can't have Titan without TIT. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is going swimmingly. And our final giveaway of the night. Oh, look. It popped up right away. Great. All right. For the Friday the 13th, Crochet Doll. Now, you'll notice there are some double names in there. And that's because they got it right. The best kill in all of the Friday the 13th series is the sleeping bag kill from Friday the 13th, part seven. So if they guess that one, your name was in there twice. Now watch none of them win. That will be funny. Shuffling and bam. For the, and who was this again that gave it away? Oh, from uh, Paul Gills. a friend of Paul Gills. Yeah. Yeah. I'll and and just for the record, Paul did guess the scene, but he's not in the entry. But he he got a couple people. All right. Lee Atkinson. We got it. Wee. All right, that's our giveaway for this week. Got that one. All right, let me go back to us. Uh, we are not going to do a giveaway this week. for next episode. We have because Jason's still recovering from the postage. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually. I'm not even joking. The last couple episodes, it's been. It's, it's caused the bills to be a bit tight <laughs> this last month. But honestly, though, I want to go through. We do have, we still have stuff from Jamie Sai, which I think is going to be our Halloween giveaway with a bunch of his minifigs. We're going to give two packs of those out. We have stuff from Paul Gill still. We have some other stuff coming. Uh, uh, Dan Cherney gave us yep, a bunch of stuff. Ton of stuff from Dan Cherney. We have mini Hellboy from Pestilence still. Uh, so I want to go through. We still have mystery donor stuff as well and you know there's a lot i want to inventory still got stuff from uh uh oh my brain i keep having mini strokes i think i think something's seriously wrong our mini stroke from, from ellie from uh zotes and shane mcgowan shane mcgowan and some something else in the pile some brushes paper craft a lot of stuff to still give away but we're going to take a break here this month while I inventory and get things kind of sorted a bit and not oh, pay good. for Come shipping. over and get this stuff from Dan Cherney so I don't have to mail it. No, because <laughs> I got a bag. <laughs> ton of stuff. All right, so we're good. All right, we are at News and Reviews, Scott. And we got a lot this episode. Yeah, uh, things are turning up for the holiday season. I yeah, guess. okay. We Yeah, it looks that way. Want to start with some YouTube stuff. Steve Riojas, our former founding member, well, not former, found, former co-host, founding member of Model Club TV and Model Club, the contest. Uh, he did a really great video over on his channel, uh, a walkthrough on a how-to 
from his latest AFM article. So there's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, the link will be in the description below. Just a quick little, I'll just put a screen cap of it here, but great stuff from Steve. So if you want to check out a really good how-to video, uh, it's a base building with some sci-fi chicks and a mech, it looks like, and good stuff. Yeah, so nice time-lapse video, but it yeah, was really cool. Some really so. cool things there. And then kind of along the same lines, uh, Brent Krug at the uh, Figure Kit Garage has an ongoing series right now of him doing a Millicent Patrick buildup. So head over to the link down below again. Check this out as well. Great stuff. If you're like, there's an email about all this later on from Truck. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk more about it there. But here's some, if you really want to see some live model building or some like how to stuff, here's some two options for you. And then Rob, uh, Rob Madison, Scott, you want to do this one while I Rob uh, has a new episode out um, on the Taurus sculpted by Mick Wood by Escape Hatch Hobbies. And uh, I think it was what a year or so ago. He gave us one of these. We actually yeah, we gave, gave one, one away. Yep. Yep. And um, so Rob did a little built up and talked about it. And um, always amazing videos. So uh, always check out Rob's stuff, Rob. You can totally Rob. tell the professionalism difference between him and us. Yeah. Well, Oh, which, but the goal of this was always to be janky, and we have achieved that goal. Yeah, if we haven't, we're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, we are going to get there. Ah, uh, man. All right. First kit from Shadow Creation, sculpted by Jeff Yeager. Uh, we have the Tall Man from Phantasm. One of my all time favorite movie characters ever. And I, this is, I, there's no competition. It's the best one out there. The best likeness of Angus Grimm, period. And this is fantastic. And it's even got the little minions holding up the base at the bottom. And he's got the sphere. It's if, I, if you have not seen Phantasm, the entire series, do yourself a favor. Oh, my God. <sighs> really? None? None of them? No. We had a lot of this conversation in. Um, not not even like a minute of phantasm like nothing don't oh, even know where to see it uh, all right so this is really cool shadow creations troy nair um thanks for putting this out this is going to be really cool this is something i really really like there's been a, a few other ones i think the ones from overseas it is a really good likeness but coming from overseas it's going to cost me a lot more money so i uh i'm going to opt for this i think so it's really good Okay. Really good. All right, Scott, you're on. That was the only thing I really saw. Wow. And, and I've seen everything. Yeah. So I, I've been busy. Our next uh, thing here from our good friend, Tony Cipriano. Cipriano. My uh, favorite Italian in the hobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's done this King Kong. It's It's a King Kong... It's really a maquette, is what it's meant to be. Okay. And comes with two heads. So it comes with each head, the round head or the long head. And um, it's uh, 3D printed, hollow. It's 12 inches tall. He's doing it. Yeah. Oh, I've, boy. It's $185 plus $15 shipping and handling. So it's $200. USPS priority mail, domestic only, please. Again, if there's someone overseas that wants this really bad, get a hold of me and I'll work something out with you because <laughs> shipping domestically means printing out forms and doing them. And well, it's Tony and I'm not sure he can do that. Tony doesn't like extra work. So, um, so some nice pictures of the unbuilt and built. And if you go to Tony Cipriano's sculpture, there's a video of uh, of it spinning around. And here's a picture of it, too, um, with the uh, couple Aurora kits that I think Tony did. Not sure if Tony painted those or not, but Tony's a big Aurora guy, too. So um, and I like those kit. I like those paint ups. They're nice and simple. Yeah, but they're kind of like the glow thing, too. Yeah. So this is a museum style pose maquette, T pose basically. It comes with both heads, disc base. It's also going to act as Tony's asset. 
Okay, meaning he will use this in like four or five more kits using the right head for the specific scene in the movie. Um, and a couple of them will be the Empire State Building with a round head. And we got a picture, a little preview of that here, too. Uh oh, Scott. What? What does this mean for? Yeah, he dreams? told me he's putting it in a dumpster and I'm, I'm trying. What? To, the dumpster? Yeah. So he told me he's going to throw it in a dumpster. So I said, at least give me the head. I'll cast the head. I'll make a bust of it because the head on that thing is perfect. We should start an online petition to save the save the save Kong. the Kong sculpture. Yes, from the dumpster. Oh my God! Um, no, Tony, so don't do that. He wants a facing Anne at the altar with a round head. T Rex fight long head chained up in New York as the round head New York uh, wall poster. That's the one where his hands are outstretched and the cityscapes below. So that's a long uh, face um, fighting the pterodactyl, which will be around. Crashing the gate down. Pterodactyl, yeah. Um, I'm reading. Pterodactyl is a couple of them. <laughs> well, that's a couple of them, which he could probably kick their ass. Um, crashing down the gate with a round, and the Empire State Building and T-Rex will be offered at jumbo scale. And so far, all the rest at one-sixth only, but that's subject to change. He's talking about doing a couple different scales. Okay. These maybe finally we're listen. dragging them along. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, and uh, he claims <laughs> he may have a table at Wonderfest next year, but we'll see. I don't buy it. Yeah, I don't either. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It's a man. challenge, Tony. Tony, the gauntlet. Hey, is he is uh, in him. the line of that hurricane? No, he's yeah, on the other side. He's on, he's on the other side. But to our um, Florida people, Tampa is Mark. Jesse and Mark, I think, are all on the um east side. Oh no. This is okay. Gonna come up the west side. Okay. Any of our Florida people that are on the west side, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. good luck. Grab your ankles. Uh, yeah. grab your ankles. Hope everything yeah. uh goes well and minimal, if any damage to where you live and all that. So yeah, um, good luck, everybody. Hang in there. So in that speaking of Jesse, uh, we talked about his Millicent Patrick uh, kit, and they've decided to take kind of a clue from the Janus Man of a Thousand Faces. Oh, cool. And um, there's going to be a deluxe version available, and the deluxe version will feature these other characters that she helped design. Um, it's, I believe that's a Karloff Mr. Hyde from Evan Casella. I was going to say, Hyde. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not sure what the other one is, which is what the eyeball one. I mean, you know who would uh, know? Phil Kuka. <laughs> he is. probably will know. That's right man. I don't know what that is. Melly Mutant. I've seen it before. I have no idea what so, that is. And then Jesse had another surprise that he was going to announce, but he has since announced. And it's also going to be available as a bust. And also with all the characters um, on the base. And a bust is a little different clothing and everything, I believe. So... Um, and he really no. made her look a lot prettier than she is in real life. Give her that. You know, I've seen pictures where she's pretty. I've seen pictures where she's not so pretty. Kind of homely. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I look pretty sometimes. Sometimes. So. Then our great friend, Well Winner. All right. In continuance with the Groovy Ghoulies line. Did I show these last time? I'm not no, sure. you did not. These are new. Okay. They're Ratso and Batso. <laughs> Ratso and Batso. Ratso and Batso, yes. And um, so they're part of the Groovy Ghoulies line. Okay. And then I really like this one. I don't know why. Fred Flintstone with his Buffalo Lodge hat and bowling ball. I don't know if you caught that. But there's bowling I, I, yep. balls That's there. pretty awesome. And uh, at first I thought the hat was off. Like it should fit down in the head more. Right. It's, but when I looked at photos, you went and looked, this okay. is how it is. All so, right. okay. And then last but not least, and this was something, I hope you don't catch any flack for this. There was a pre-paint out there of this, and this was a pose I was going to suggest to him, and I never did. And it turns out he did it anyway. This is Shaggy and Scooby. Um, they just saw Jason in the shower. And... Um, the <laughs> I always got to take shots. I always got to take shots. 
By the way, if you haven't watched the Pew Pew videos, search for them. And there's this guy in a cooler. Tony posts them all the time. There's this guy, he's like inside a cooler. When people open the cooler to get stuff, he shoots them with a squirt gun and goes, pew, 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 pew. All right, I'll post it here if I can find it. So, oh, it cracks me up. Anyway, um, well, did this, this is awesome. This is an awesome piece. It is. And I don't know um, when it's going to be available, but. I know yeah. Well watches the show, right? Yes. Okay, Well, I have suggestions. <laughs> don't listen. Well. Well. Scooby-Doo villains with removable heads with the mask on and the mask off. The goon, the goon what was the goon? The submarine guy? The, the You know what I'm talking about? The diving helmet, dude. Before you give the guy suggestions, you might want to... Oh, no, just go and look. All right, Trick or Treat Studios has all of them as, as masks. There's a clown. There's the goon. Mm-hmm. There's a the, like, bunch of those guys. Do the villains with the mask on and the mask off. Because they're cool. I really like those villains. And uh, he tells me that uh, the Jason and Scott Model Club kit is in the works. That's the dumbest thing he's ever done. <laughs> Lord, us help. Lord, help us all. So. All right. Okay, next up. Another Ooh, beautiful Jeff Yeager piece. This is, and I just got this information today. Mike Calvert, Typhon. Okay. You can get a hold of him. Um, this is the monster from The Bride of Frankenstein. Wow. Okay. And, um, you know, I know everyone's going to say, oh, great, another Frankenstein bust, but I'm already on the list. That's really Um, nice. And uh, Mike's actually got a box of stuff on the way to us, too. So we're going to have a few little giveaways from Mike, too, I think. Okay. But, um, yeah, so this is a nice piece. Uh, There's a nameplate as well, which for some reason I didn't put the pictures up here, but um, I'll try to get them to you. And um, very cool. Yeah. Now, early on when I was 3D printing, I came across Diego. Diago. Elves dos Santos. Diago. Okay. And I printed a lot of stuff of his. And he kind of went into a, I think he got some work. So he went into a little bit of a hiatus. Okay. Mm -hmm. But recently he's come back with a few kits and we have Woody Woodpecker. Were you a big Woody fan? You know, I liked Woody's look. I didn't watch Woody Woodpecker. He was a little irritating, Woody. but, you know. And then uh, this is a little more 90s. 90s. 80s, yeah, 90s. 90s. Animaniacs. Animaniacs. Yeah. But they're really nice, and we should buy the girl and print it, and you should paint it for Lori, because that's her favorite. Um, is it really? Yes. Okay, yeah. I will, because I owe her something. So. And then this is Hector, I believe, in Pussycat. And uh, this one's been up there for a while. I don't know if I ever showed it or not. But again, these are all um, Diego's pieces. He's a lot of like museum style uh, Warner Brothers stuff. Mm-hmm. So cool. He actually wants me to print one of them for him. So um, look at that, Mister Fancy. Yeah, Mister Fancy. And then this then, is awesome. Next thing. Now this is going to be the styrene creature from the Black Lagoon from X Plus. Wow. And uh, based on Revenge of the Creature, actually. Yeah. And uh, it's awesome. And there's some there's some pictures from, uh, I think it was the Summer Wonder Fest in, in Japan, Japan. Yeah. Which is where this is. And I don't want to spoil it, but behind the creature, you can see the other three they're going to do, which is Dracula, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the Monster in Styrene. Whoa. And Jason and I were lucky to see a little sneak preview of the Dracula. And if you find some other pictures and different angles, you can kind of see the head behind the creature. But I don't have those pictures. And we don't have pictures we can show. It's just a quick glance we were given. But um, so we've seen the Dracula, and the Dracula is not disappoint. And um, no. this creature doesn't disappoint. X plus is kicking ass, really. And uh, yeah, they've got the Jose Gonzalez Vampirella. Yeah. I just ordered the Cyclops vinyl kit. Yeah, see, um, I kind of want that too. I have the Mike Maddie one that I really, really like. But mm-hmm. this one looks a little meaner. 
at that. Well, I'll let you know because next, uh, hopefully, I'll have it by next episode. I'll be able to. Okay, I might just. Here. I have to do. I have to check. And and that's available through uh, Cult TV. Man's got a limited number of those. Okay. So. Um, cool. Now the next thing I saw, and I didn't get the information, but it, it, the guy's got a Patreon, and we'll maybe put it, we'll in, put the, it in, um, in the description. But I'm a fan of. I, the Disney movies. I do like the Disney movies. I, I don't like the company per se, but I do like a lot of the movies. What's your favorite Disney movie, Scott? I really liked Aladdin. Um, now that's if we're not counting Pixar movies to go with it. No, no Pixar, straight Disney. Okay, so straight Disney movie. Um, probably Aladdin. Although. I'm partial to Jungle Book because that was, I think, the first one I saw. And I really like this one, Hercules. And a lot of it had to do with James Wood's performance as Hades. Yeah. And this Hades is, what were they, Pain and Panic? The, yeah. the two uh, little minions of his. And they were, Oh, if, if is good. You know, I mean, and so this is Hades on a, Big throne with a Hercules, Hercules bust in his hand. And then the two guys, you know, the two. Uh, yeah, that's meetings. really nice. And um, this is available. And this we're going to go to 3D printing here for a minute. You can join this Patreon for $15 and get this. Yeah. And you can and join probably a welcome package as well. Uh, for 20, you get the welcome package and the right to print these. Oh, cool. So um yeah nice yes i just told it up i'm doing a hundred dollars a month right now on patreon yeah i'm i'm yeah i gotta stop <laughs> i have to delete one of them hey can we go back to disney movies for a second what's your favorite sure. live action disney movie since you never watch movies i, I want to have a movie conversation real fast. <laughs> favorite live action i was just talking about one that terrified me like yesterday it's, I have a I have an irrational fear. I don't know if I've ever brought it up on the show. And it's from a Disney movie. You know what? Um, Mighty Joe Young. Oh, I'm talking old, like the old ones. Oh, the old ones? Like those old, like Apple Dumpling Gang, like that stuff. I was never a big fan of that stuff. Really? Really. I, I remember I liked The Love Bug, the original Herbie yeah. The Love Bug. What about Black Hole? Like Did you ever see that? Never saw Black Hole. Dude, Black Hole's so good. It or Tron. Up. I never saw Tron. What but about see, to me, okay. those are more modern, too, really, when you eh. think about it. Escape, mean, just es a Witch Mountain. Did you see Witch Mountain? No. So, okay. I have, I have a confession. I think I might have said this. I am afraid, from this movie to this day, I don't like animated clothing. And what I mean like by that is it's like a shirt that moves by itself with nobody in it. Because there's a scene in that movie where the kids are fighting clothes <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me as a kid. And mm -hmm. there was a commercial like a couple years ago where a lady was fighting a shirt going into the dryer or washing machine. I can't, I can't watch it. It's terrifying to me. <laughs> but like, oh, you got it. Did you watch something so, wicked this way comes? Did you ever so, see that? So he gives, he gives me this information. Okay. I know. I'm afraid saying. of clothes. But did you ever see something wicked this way comes? Like the old... Like that one with Jason Robach and no, I, I I didn't see a lot. I remember seeing the world's greatest athlete or the world's strongest yeah. man or something. I remember seeing a few of those. What about uh um um oh my god, my brain another mini stroke. <laughs> and, and again, none of the Disney live actions. I love. I used to rent Apple Dumpling Gang all the time as a kid. But again, the newer ones, I love their version of Mighty Joe Young. A lot of people, yeah pan that i love the fact that ray harryhausen was in it and uh terry moore who played the girl in the original are you joe young that's kind of before young. disney took a dump like right now there's no way <laughs> there's no way james wood and disney would woods would ever uh be in a disney movie ever again if anyone follows james wood on twitter oh uh, because of his uh, political yeah, view is, in there uh, so yeah they're on so, the opposite side of the spectrum these days um yeah and so it, it's yeah. You know. So anyway, moving on. I was just wondering Disney stuff. I like the Pixar stuff a lot better, but even some of the Pixar stuff, like we could have stopped at Toy Story 2. 
Yeah. Okay. Toy Story 3 was eh, and I watched three minutes of Toy Story 4. I haven't even been able to get through it yet. So I think my f- favorite Pixar is up. Really? I like the first Incredibles. Incredibles? Yeah, I that first one. I, I didn't good. care for the second one, I didn't but I really one. liked the first one. Up is like the, like a punch in the gut in the first five minutes. You're like, what the fuck? It's so sad. It's so, so sad. Oh my god. But it's a good movie. Now, Bugs Life I didn't care for. Yeah. Finding Nemo was in, yeah. you know, but um. Anyway, Disney. Okay, you're gonna have something Ooh. to show right here. So right here, we yeah, we don't have it this second, but it, within 24 hours, I'll have if, it. If so the magic. mail doesn't screw up, it will be here magically. And and here it is. Okay. Okay, model clovers. Yesterday we didn't have this piece, but today we do. So, we were able to squeeze it in the episode. This came this morning from Pestilence Labs. Mark Worthling it was originally going to be a Monsters from the Woods kit, but I believe he purchased that from John Deary. And is now a Pestilence Lab kit. It is a 1-6 scale, Artist Bay. Sculpted by, of course, Jeff Yeager, the Karloff master. And this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 piece kit. Um... Pretty much all solid, too. And um, great castings, as always. And comes the base. And my favorite, of course, a foot. <laughs> a gnarly foot. Okay. And then the other foot is on the um, piece itself. And so the piece itself is kind of cool. You just stick it on the base. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to get it all in here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And then he's got this arm here. And there's a hand here. And the artist bay head. Look at that. Okay. Awesome. This is by far the best artist bay out there, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've had other ones, or I've seen other ones, but I just love the pose. Jeff captured this perfect. We're going to give you a little close-up here if we can of the likeness of Karloff. I'm going to back up a little bit. But um, once again, another... And then, I can't speak enough about this base. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit. And what I want to say about this is, so the base is the rock. You can kind of position this wherever you want. And you've got this this piece here. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well, but maybe. Look how thin that is. Yeah, hold on. Let me move my hand and you'll see Look how thin that is. Great, great work. Um, but when you set this on the base, it is so flat. Let's see if I can get this closer here. It's almost seamless. Like, so you can set it wherever you want, you know, wherever it'll fit, probably over here. And it's like it's molded into the base. It's beautiful. And then the urn. There's beautiful work on the urn. So you can turn that however you like. And fit the urn right in there. So um, I like the base. I like the compactness of this. Everything is solid. To the best of my knowledge. And uh, beautifully cast. Just, just fantastic. So I cannot recommend this enough. Um, got this from Mark. And uh, I got one of the first ones, if not the first one. And uh, <laughs> don't laugh, everyone. I'm looking forward to building this. So there you go. There's my review of this. Uh, five out of five. Great job, guys. And uh, I can't believe this bad boy's solid. So whew. anyhow. Okay. I'll stick my head in here. Thanks for watching. Okay. That was great. <laughs> That was fantastic. That was fantastic. And I have number one. Really? How'd you pull that off? He wanted to get it on the show. I'm like, <laughs> cough up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, uh, workbench. Do we even bother with the workbench this episode? Because I... Yeah, haven't. the workbench, we should show my deck and me scrubbing it. <laughs> Which leads to another story. Okay. Oh, here we go. 
So the Sunday, the day after the um, picnic, I started to get warnings on my phone. Severe thunderstorm, blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking at the radar on my phone. And this thing is headed dead for me. Okay. So I headed straight for you. The severe thunderstorm. Okay. Okay. So we use this Dawn. Everyone's seen the commercial where you spray it and it foams up. uh, Dawn power wash or whatever. So I go out there in the deck where this house, a mental defective moron screwed up my deck. And I'm spraying all this grease down with this Dawn. Figuring if it pours down rain combined with the Dawn dishwashing detergent, maybe Mother Nature will help me out a little bit. Okay. So I run out there, I'm spraying, I'm spraying. Well, it turns out the storm dissipates as it gets to me and moves just a little bit east. Dude, I would have paid money and, for it to and, see you do that and like slip and fall home alone style. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so, so now, you know, because I have a dog, I have to go get buckets of water and I'm rinsing down all this soap that I threw on there because the storm doesn't come. So, so again, Jason haunts me for like, a while. I'm the gift that keeps on giving, man. He's banned from my house for a little <laughs> while. You will not be seeing a what's in the bin for a while because what's in the bin with Jason Walker's hands tied. So yes. there you go. Okay. Uh honestly though, uh workbench wise, I'm still painting miniatures. I'm building a couple kits over there that I'm actually gonna paint. Uh and probably put those videos up on the channel. Here. Did get some big news. Just re-released on DVD Blu-ray. Think I have that Blu-ray? The original. Nice. I'm not even going to say the original. I'm going to say... Shouldn't that be in news and reviews? The only. Well, we're kind of at the end of news and reviews. No, we're in Workbench, where you make hmm. stuff. Well, whatever. Which comes to an email later on again. <laughs> So when do you want me to open this? What's that? It's my box from David and Lois. Oh, uh, let's do it now. We'll put it in a workbench since we ain't got shit else to talk about. Hey, it takes an exacto knife, right? Yeah, you're working on opening the box. And have I mentioned a zillion times how I love this little thing on the exacto knife? The plastic cover? Yes. Oh my god. So when it rolls off, like I'm sure yours does ten times a day. Um, it doesn't. I never uh, drop anything. What are you talking about? The only well, way you except well, I will say I know, this, I, did, I broke purpose. the Venom model I showed last week. Two days yeah. later, <laughs> hey, and the good news is you never put the spatula down. I could, I did drop it. I think once. Oh, didn't surprise me. Uh, so Let's what'd you get? What I have from David Horvath. A little card. Flowers. <laughs> By the way, David brought us some. Uh, what did what did he bring us? Apple pie. Apple pie. Did or you no, try no, no. it? Cherry yet? pie. Cherry. Pie. Cherry pie. Did you try it yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Scott and Joanne, thanks again for hosting the cookout and opening your home to our crazy group. We found this Curly Howard at an antique shop. And knew we had to get it for Joanne. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. It's Scott. Take care. And we'll be seeing you at Wonderfest this summer. Dave and Lois. So just so everyone knows, we got into a discussion about the Three Stooges. And my wife loves the Three Stooges. And I Dave's mean, wife loves the Three Stooges. And I must have been the only one there that yeah, I don't get the Three Stooges. And I'm the abnormal one in the world. Oh. And look at that, how they took care of us. Well, first of all. Aw, are you going to cry? Wow, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. Where is that wood? Yep, that's awesome. My Rexy, he was a good boy. All right, what else we got here? I guess this is uh, just for Joanne to kick around. <laughs> it looks just like you. <laughs> Put that up next to your head. Put it next to your head. No, and what's funny is, dude, 
Okay, he had to draw an arrow to show the eye. No, okay. that's him winking, I think. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's maybe like it he's, got, he's got crow's feet. Put that right oh, next okay. to your head. Put that next to your... Oh, dude. What in the world? Who made that? What is... It is a... Per... <laughs> it's like the Seinfeld episode where they made an Elaine mannequin. Someone wow. took your face and made it a curry What? But again, thanks to uh, Dave. Uh, oh my god, that's awesome. This will definitely go up in the shelf because uh this was my guy, man. I, yeah. I look at him and think of him every day. And uh yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. So yeah. thanks, Dave. That's so awesome. make sure Joanne it's gets way that better than a foot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> make so, sure Joanne uh, gets that curly. <laughs> you know, I should call her in here. That's so cool. Hold on. Joanne. Joanne. Come in here. No, you got to come in here. It's because this is for you. So Dave and Lois sent us a box. There's Joanne, everybody. Dave and Lois. <laughs> oh my God. No, nope. no, you got to see. You got to do this. You, trust me, you're going to love it. So Dave and um, <laughs> Lois sent us a box. I told you she wouldn't be happy about you pulling her into the camera. Turn, turn the light on real quick so you can see this. So Dave did this for me. Oh. Okay. And they wanted to send you something to remind you of me. So this is for you from David Lowe. That looks pretty familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Okay, take it with you. That's for you. I need something for you. Turn the light off. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Oh, dude, she hates you. <laughs> That's perfect, isn't it? Oh, God. All well, right. anyway. Wow. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I, I didn't know what else to say. That was. Uh, um, all right, Workbench, have you made anything? Built anything? Cast no, anything? I made, I made Joanne beat the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah. That doll, though, I'll tell you. Did you have you cast anything? Any progress on the uh, parts for the coop? Uh, coop? No. No? No. No. Have you built it? Yeah. No, it's so it's uh winter time here in Chicago. No, it's not. It's not it's, it's September. It's getting to be winter time. How did this even get up here? It's one of my pieces off my chair. Um it's winter time. What are you talking it's about? To be well, it's it's winterized time, I should say. Oh, okay. So we had to close our pool. And uh, do some stuff. So and then I had to work on a car over the weekend. So um, We're, this is going to come into play in the email later on. We'll, we'll kind of say that. All right. Uh, yeah, I just been kind of building. There's some stuff I'm working on, uh, but nothing to really show right now. All right. Interview. Hey, so thank you. This was awesome. Yeah, that was a great. Uh, our interview is with the legendary Joe Ladotti. And. Going to do a quick montage of Joe's stuff before we enter the interview. Um, this was great. And thank you to Joe for coming on. There's going to be a lot of like links down below for you to uh, support Joe and buy some of his stuff and support other people and just go look at stuff. Scott and I, after this was over, we're both like, holy crap, that was great. We didn't know a lot of that stuff. Any thoughts, Scott, before we jump in? No, I mean, I didn't know. I, mean, I knew who Joe was. I maybe have met Joe before. I maybe corresponded with Joe before, but nothing major. And um it was kind of at Paul Gill's uh suggestion to try to get him on. Well he's and, I th I think he has been one of our most requested guests, honestly. And, and I so like he has been. Yeah. And he came on and and I didn't understand the scope of like him. Well and you'll see early on uh, some of the stuff he's worked on, mm -hmm. stop motion animation and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I we don't want to ruin it. We'll leave it as a surprise for people. But I had no idea. So yeah. check it out and yeah. we'll talk about it maybe a little at the end. Yep, for sure.
All right, everybody, we are back with Joe Ladotti. Joe, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine tonight. Thank you. And we want to thank you, you so much for being with us. Uh, you have been one of our, I think, one of our most requested guests, actually, to be on the show. I know that I don't know if that's surprising or not, but a lot of people are like you got to get some real tactile sculptors in here to talk about mm -hmm. garage kid sculpting. So thank you yeah. so much for joining us tonight. We truly, truly appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. When was the when did you know you were good at this? Like, what was that what? moment? Uh, probably, I mean, as far as garage kid sculpting goes or sculpting uh, in general, when like when was the first like, oh, my God, I can actually sculpt. Probably, well, actually, when I was a kid, because it started out very early. Um, I should say that I'm, my story kind of involves also my two older brothers, because we all got into this stuff together. And uh, I guess it began when I was like um, two years old. I saw, my, I, I saw my first dinosaur at the New York World's Fair in 1964, and I was blown away by that. Shortly after that, my brothers and I encountered our first model tips in a little candy store in Brooklyn, New York, which is where we live. And it was great. Candy store. And in the back, all these model kits, you know, stashed behind there. And that's our first glimpse of the Aurora model kits. Beautiful box art, you know, colored images of Frankenstein and King Kong. And uh, I think it was the King Kong model, even at that early age, but going away by. And uh, we saw King Kong for the first time shortly after that. So I must have been like two and a half, maybe just shy of three years old. And uh, that was the start of it all. Um, my brothers and I moved upstate New York. I guess we were bored because we got into doing all the stuff <laughs> that kids that age get into. We were into the monsters, the universe of monsters. We started learning to do makeup. We got the Dick Smith handbook and read famous monsters of film land. And we slowly got into like, making ourselves up as Frankenstein and I was a wizard <laughs> man. And, and my, my father had a, a, a eight millimeter movie camera and we started, you know, doing our little monster movies. <laughs> That's awesome. And then a very incredible thing happened. We were fooling around with this camera and when you hit the down button, you hear crack, 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 as, as the show is going, we accidentally hit it up, click. And we wondered, what is that? And my dad said, oh, that's if you want to take um, time-lapse photography. That's a single frame. Boom. <laughs> yeah. That learned that we could do stop-motion animation. So we had just learned about that from Famous Monsters, stop-motion animation. It's how they did King Kong. We discovered Ray Harryhausen. So we shifted everything from makeup to making our own stop-motion models. And that's when I started learning how to sculpt. We were handcrafting these jointed rubber figures, most of them duplicates of the Ray Harry album. And I started doing my first versions of Guanji and the Emir and the Cyclops. And we were animating these in our either in our like bedroom or in our you know backyard. It was great shooting in a backyard because the sky would like traverse across the screen in time lapse as the monster. <laughs> But anyway, so we got very much into stop motion, and that's also when I started learning how to sculpt because I gravitated from hand sculpting latex and rubber over these figures to actually sculpting in clay and making a mold and doing that. And so that's really where I perfected my sculpting skills. And um, the three of us got into SUNY Purchase, the film program based on these short films we made. And uh, so my brother Mike took a little course in makeup. And he ended up getting pulled out of college in his third year to become a professional makeup artist. So suddenly he's working at New York City Opera. He's working on Spielberg movies and NBC TV shows. My brother, Tony, uh, he completed a stop motion animated short film for his senior, senior thesis film. He won a Student Academy Award. He got immediately hired by Lucasfilm, working with Industrial Light and Magic. And he started working on his Spielberg and Lucas movies. At that point, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was being pulled in different directions. I was learning makeup. I was also doing a stop motion. I made a short stop motion film of my own with live actors and animation called 10,000 Demons. And that's how I graduated SUNY Purchase. But then I was like launched onto the world. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, so I kind of pursued the stop motion that my brother Tony had done. because He had worked professionally in New York. 
But also my brother Mike was uh, designing makeup for an off-Broadway show and he needed an, he needed someone to do the makeup. Last minute, he called me. It was a show called I'm Not Rappaport. It starred Judd Hirsch and Cleveland Little. They needed to be made up into 81-year-old men. <laughs> Mike couldn't find anybody. So he gives me a call and says, Joe, can you do this? And I said, all right, I'll do it. So that happened simultaneously with a stop motion career that began. And I was working on shows like Pee Wee's Playhouse, Sesame Street and stuff like that. So I was doing that. I was also working on Broadway. The show moves Broadway and wins Tony. So it's like all this stuff happening at once. So I continued that for a bit. And then I was doing stop motion animation continued for about another like, eight or nine years. Um, and then a friend of mine who was a toy sculptor, he said he was, he, he was happened to be working with some guy who was working on a model kit of the monster that challenged the world. And I said, well, huh, what, what do you mean model? <laughs> I had never heard of, of that. You know, I assumed he meant like he was painting an imported Japanese kit or something. He says, no, this guy actually produces original model kits. So I put together my stuff and I went down to Town Ridge and met Mike Fasella, who was the founder of Resin from the Grave. And I was blown away by all these models he had on his shelves. You know, they were like Aurora model kits, but of characters I'd never seen before. The Werewolf of London, <laughs> you know, picture from the Black, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, the Manster, all these great sculptures produced by, you know, now big names like Jeff Yeager and, you know, Randy Bowen and all that. But I showed him my work and he was very impressed with my Harry Housen type thing. Said, would you like to do a model kit? And I said, I would love to do a model kit of Guanji. And he said, Oh yeah, well we're gonna get to Guanji, but first you gotta do me Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> so that's how I got started in garage kits. And wow. I did a of uh, Mighty Joe Young uh, fighting these two lions. And that we brought it to uh, the first you know monster convention, and it was a big hit. And next thing I know, I was doing uh, more for Mike. I did um, a rather famous kit called um, King Kong versus the T Rex, and that became very popular. I have two of them. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Outside the big gorilla kit that everyone, you know, going crazy to find. So, <laughs> and so I continued to work for Mike Pacella. He was a real character, you know, very eccentric individual, and everyone has a story about Mike Pacella. Oh, they sure do. <laughs> yeah, but I got along with him, and I was meeting some other people as well, like Daniel Fay, uh, who ended up hiring me to do a whole bunch of screening products. Um, Scott Kelly, whom I'm still working for after almost 30 years, and we pounded up tons and tons of stuff for Scott. And um, Terry Fitton from Monsters of Motion hired me to do a bunch of Harry Housen figures, and uh, um, John Tucky, Exo Facto, I did a lot of work uh, work with. So that's uh, pretty much what I was doing. And before you know it, I was just pounding these figures out. And, uh, you know, I built a name for myself. And uh, it's, just, it's just ongoing. Now, based on that work, I was able to get work in the toy industry as well. So I worked for um, a company called The Art Asylum, which was an action figure company. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of action figures. And uh, that gravitated to some other companies. I ended up doing tons of superhero work, you know, all hand sculpted. And, and uh, do you like Chris, that? Like, are, are superheroes your thing or not your thing? No, nah, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's my thing, but I've done so many of them. You know, yeah. I've done Batman and Superman and, um, you know, Spider Man, The Hulk, and Wolverine, so many. And it gets. You know, it's kind of like the company I was working for, they got used to working with me. And so they ended up hiring me to do like an entire line of products. You know, I did bus banks and, well, you know, things like, things like this. Oh, yeah. Item. Okay. And uh, <laughs> lots of Batman figures. Now, these were vinyl bus banks. And we, I must have done maybe like 30 of these different characters. And uh, did you and do we, the Dark Knight one? The. The uh, Miller Dark Knight yeah. one? Yeah, I got him here. <laughs> the Dark oh, wow. Knight. Okay. Yeah, I got that sitting <laughs> on my shelf back here. <laughs> I, I literally have it sitting back here. It's up here somewhere. Yeah, these are a very popular product. In fact, I went with uh, the client to uh, New York Comic Con 
And of course, all these tables are all this incredible product, but they were selling, you know, all these little things. Now these are cheap, you know, these are selling for like 15 bucks. And they were selling them like candy. Everyone was going, <laughs> yeah, but the, you know, these are such cool little figures, you know, Joker and, you know, all this. But, you know, I was like doing all of them, the entire line. So that mm -hmm. kept them pretty gainfully employed for a bit. And, uh, <clears throat> And that gravitated into other companies. I ended up working for Kurt Adler, a Christmas company, and they did tons of um, Christmas ornaments, a very conceivable thing. Yeah, Again, the Christmas uh, ornaments are a huge thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was listening to Tony Cipriano. Yeah. So back to that. <clears throat> it's funny because um, when I was working uh, in the 90s, I worked with Paul Gill. And We're sorry. Was... We're so sorry. That guy. <laughs> oh, we love Paul. <laughs> I just kidding. Yeah, we, we produced some stuff. <laughs> But he got the idea to do the uh, the bumble from the adult red muscle. And that thing um, sold really well. So we ended up doing um, the heat miser, uh, freeze miser, and all these other Rudolph characters. And uh, a years later, when I worked for Kurt Adler, I ended up working with those same characters, you know, just doing tons of, you know, little Rudolph ornaments. And, well, that's the bumble from like Rudolph. Yeah. So, so that was sort of good practice that we did that one with those little figures, and then suddenly I was doing tons of them. So, Scott, do you yeah. have a question before I take a point of personal privilege and ask a question? Oh sure. no, go ahead. Okay. Don't let me stop. I you. have a very selfish question. You mentioned you worked on Sesame Street and Pee Wee's Playhouse. Mm -hmm. I got to know about that. What What did you do on Pee Wee's Playhouse? I love Pee Wee Herman. I love Pee Wee's Playhouse. Love Sesame oh, Street. Yeah. What did you yeah, do over there? Still watching Sesame Street. By the way. <laughs> I do. I love Sesame Street stuff. Well, Pee Wee's Playhouse was literally a madhouse. I had was just out of college for about a year. I was working for another company doing some animation work. Then I got a call from a company called Broadcast Arts, and they called me in and they wanted me to do some puppet work for Pee Wee's Playhouse. <sighs> um, but it, like they had no real design work. They had done this HBO special, right? Um, and right. They, yeah. Terry the Pterodactyl, you can probably remember him from the mm -hmm. HBO special. They wanted me to do the Terry pup, but it wasn't based on that old thing. So I basically had carte blanche to like create Terry the Pterodactyl, you know? And, you know, so I just built, you know, this crude rod puppet made, you know, it made out of all kinds of weird things and parts and trying to keep that crude puppet look. I based it obviously on Ray Harryhausen's Pterodactyl because it had, you know, the you know, the wing, fingered wings and all that. And uh, we did like several versions of that hand puppet, stop motion puppet. But that was it. I did, I did Terry the Pterodactyl. So uh, that was my key thing on, on, on Pee-Wee's Playhouse. And I also did some, you know, like the fridge puppets and I did some animation in that. And, uh, but that was, that was Did you do the stop fun. motion animation for that? Or was that somebody else? So there were, quite a, there were a number of different... Uh, because there was like the show. penny what was it penny that was on there that they would do uh chris uh tim young tim young did it. okay he, he oh my god this is so cool <laughs> yeah. sesame street what did you do there i did little vignettes of you know counting chairs and balancing balls and things like that it was short but they, i think they still air now and then um so yeah i love some of them was, old sesame street yeah. stop motion things so I remember some of them. So uh, yeah, Jason still needs them to count. I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> or they didn't work very well when I was little. Like I was, I don't know. I have math <laughs> issues. Huge math yeah. issues. Yeah. Well, one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Kind of fun because I watch my career sculpting toys of other people's products. Hold on a second. <laughs> this is a wind up Terry the Pterodactyl that somebody sculpted. Based on my design. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That has to feel amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, a huge collection of stuff? Are you a big collector too? Or are you just like, here's the stuff I made and I just keep that? I, 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 I'm in a larger space now than I was for years. I lived in Manhattan, like a little studio apartment. So I was never able to collect that much. I don't even have all of my stuff. And uh, 
much as I love Fibber own so much of the incredible stuff out there, I don't have the room. Yeah. But there's also the other dilemma in that, you know, I have my stuff on display. People come to see it. They say, oh, my God, you did all that? <laughs> and I don't want to have to say, yeah, everything except that. That's Randy Bowen or that. That's just <laughs> or that. You know, like, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I did it all. <laughs> it sounds like you started very early. So if I may ask, how old are you now, Joe? I actually just turned 60 this year. So, so, so you're only a year older than me. Wow. Yeah, you guys are the same age. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, it's been like garage kits. It's been about 30, you know, 32 years now. Yes. And I've done so many of them. You know, I try to figure out how many I've done. I stopped counting like 2014 when I published a book on this subject. And I think back then it was kind of like 230 something. Oh, wow. Now it's probably over 250. You know, and, uh, Wow. And, you know, with Facebook, I'm constantly seeing, you know, people find the old grail kid, Joe Young, but, you know, I'm posting it up there. Yeah. And, uh, do you th- yeah. Do you think there's someone out there that sculpted more than you? I don't know. Jeff Yeager, he's been out there. For it's really close. I think time. it's a very close race between the two of you. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff sculpted quite a bit, for sure. Jeff probably sculpted 200 Frankensteins by now, for crying out loud. <laughs> Well, he's the one that kind of started this whole thing, as far as I understand. So. Mm-hmm. I see. You know, and then, of course, that's the garage kit that doesn't include the toy work, which I've probably done hundreds and hundreds of that as well. So. Um, yeah. What, my when it comes to is, sculpting by itself, what do you sculpt in? Like, what's your chosen material? What do you like to use? What how, how, yeah, process? It's the very basic. Um, it's aluminum armature wire with uh, super sculpt. Usually like a great, guy. Okay. You know, and uh, you know, that's fake. But there are other mediums I employ as well. There's, there's a epoxy putties. And uh, when I was working for the artist on we did everything like uh, we did a, a sculpture and then molded and cast in a wax and did all the fine wax detailing with a wax pen. But when I left artist on I kind of combined it too. So I would do a sculpty figure and then lay wax onto it. Okay. With the wax, make like the fine detailing of the eyes and other features, you know. So it's, it tends to be a lot of mixed media. Sean Nagel got really upset with me when I said how much I hated Sculpey on this show, trying to work with it. It always is very brittle to me. And yeah. is there a way to avoid that? Is there a, like something that someone could do to make it less brittle and easier to work with? Well, Sculpey has a shelf life. You know, when you if you buy it brand new, it tends to be very soft and gummy. And if you buy it too late, it gets very firm. So the trick is to know how to counteract that. If it's too soft, what I do is I cut it into slices and, you know, I may put a rolling pin on into thin sheets and I'll lay it between pieces of clean white paper and that will absorb the extra solvent. And if you leave that out for like a, you know, a day or so, it'll firm up. And then if it's too firm, I do the opposite. I'll slice the brick into these, you know, thin slices and I'll rolling pin them. And then I'll case, you know, sandwich them between drops of salt, uh, Sculpey Dilute. Oh yeah, I got some of that. A few drops of that, you yeah. put the two together. And then, then I, like on an anvil, I'll literally pound it into a pancake <laughs> and rolling pin and then knead it. And, you know, and that will soften the hard Sculpey. And you just work it until it's, the, you know, whichever um, consistency you prefer. So, yeah, it, it took, a, I know a lot of people who are like classic and they can figure stuff out. Yeah. You know, plastic or scummy or cracks when you bake it. You learn all these tricks as you go. You know, now it's, you know, it's the main medium. <laughs> I'm imagining Joe at about one o'clock in the morning working, <laughs> bam, bam, bam. And his neighbor's going, what the hell is he doing now? <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, actually, I've got all these power tools in my back room. And, you know, I live in an apartment complex. Fortunately, it's like a lot of college students, so they don't they don't care about noise. <laughs> but uh, I always have to worry. You know, I'm afraid like an old lady is going to move upstairs, and you know, I'll be working power tools. You know, <laughs> you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, just taking a nap. But, have have you been in New York your whole life? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I was in New York City for like 28 years, but uh, finally moved out and moved out to the Hudson Valley, where I'm now. I'm in. New Pulse, beautiful surroundings and a college town and mountains in the background. 
So yeah, it's oh, an idyllic place. And I live just down the street from my key employer these days too. So that really worked out. Uh, Sweet. So you've sculpted for X plus now the uh, Guanji. I didn't do the Guanji. Oh, you didn't do the Guanji. Okay. Guanji. <laughs> Damn it. X plus is an interesting story. Um, I did the Medusa thing, the one that uh, will be coming out shortly. But okay. um, I was originally contacted by um, the art director from X Plus, maybe about three years ago. They wanted to purchase my uh, Triceratops and Ceratosaurus from One Million Years BC, and I said, "Sure." I, you know, they wanted the rights to reproduce it as a line of statues. So I. You know, we had a contract. I sold them two pristine copies. You know, they paid me decently. And that was that. Um, and then a year later, I wondered what happened to them. So then they started producing these Harry Hogan figures. And among them was the Brucey Allosaurus. And I was like, hmm, what happened to my Ceratosaurus and Triceratops? Um, so I contacted the guy. And he said, well, unfortunately, they decided to go with a larger scale. So they had to re-sculpt. So they didn't use my figures at all. But um, they started putting out all these Harry Hogan figures. You know, and I was kind of disappointed that they didn't hire me since they knew one. that. So I kind of felt like the, the guy tries out for the high school musical and doesn't get the lead, but then has to listen to the guy they chose sing off key, you know, because each yeah. figure comes mm -hmm. like, well, that's not <laughs> quite right. Like I am like struggling not to badmouth some of these figures, and then they ended up hiring me, um, which is kind of an interesting story. But, um, I was dating a witch last year. <laughs> Been there. I was dating a witch, <laughs> and uh, she happened to send me a photograph of this Medusa from off my website that had sculpted her years earlier for geometric design. That figure got lost in a fire; it was never produced. But it was this nice figure of Medusa holding the bow. Or knocking the arrow. <clears throat> so I said, yeah, that was the figure I did a year ago. A week after she did that, I got the note, I got the call from Star Ace. They sent me a sketch of Medusa and say we want to be with Medusa. And I sent them back the picture that my girlfriend sent me. I said, Yeah, I did a Medusa back then. This is what it looks like. They saw that pose, they said, We're gonna go with that. <laughs> so basically that older figure was the, you know the model for uh oh, what's an attack? The Guanji. Yeah. yeah. What's the cat's name? Buddy. This oh, is Buddy. That's my dog's name. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> very popular name. Yeah, Buddy <laughs> likes to jump up on shelves and knock model kids off. Oh my so. god, that's why I don't have a cat. Right there. Yeah. So, so anyway, so I got to do Medusa. There was talk of me doing others, but I guess they just prefer to work with local Japanese artists because. Uh, I haven't been called since then, but so back. I'm not a to, fan of their emir. I'm going to tell you, I I didn't like their emir that much. Yeah, the mm -hmm. emir. The problem with their emir is that they based it on the maquette that Harry Alton sculpted, mm -hmm. which was never a good likeness of the movie character anyway. I and mean, you know, it's a decent sculpture, but I've sculpted the emir like five times in my career, and I've had access to that figure and I took copious photos and all that. I never used that figure as reference in any of my emirs, but it just doesn't look like the movie. But they very clearly used base there in your on that maquette, and that's why, you know, it just doesn't doesn't hit the mark at all. You know, and then they didn't hire me to do Guanji, and that's like Guanji is like my flagship character. You know? <laughs> so that I had to like grit my teeth every time I see a picture of that. And I've gotten tons of emails from people. Oh, you should have hired you to do one. You know that. So. Is that your favorite character that Harryhausen ever did? I have a particularly close relationship with Wanji. Okay. I even wrote a novelization of the movie. <laughs> That's how close <laughs> I am to it. So uh, yeah, this is my my 1969 movie tie into the Valley of Wanji. Oh, movie. that's awesome! Yeah. Wow. Uh, but is yeah, it bo the, like, do you like being known as the Harryhausen sculptor, or is it yeah, like, or do you feel like it, it sticks you in a category and it's hard to get out of there sometimes? I really enjoy the Harryhausen characters. I know them really well. I've lived my life with them, and I do take a certain pride knowing that they are appreciated. You know, I do like to do original stuff too. Um, you know, after a while, you kind of feel like the uh, 
you know, the Beatles tribute, you know, you know, <laughs> and guy who sings Paul McCartney, you know, it's kind of like, well, that's all they want me to do, you know, <laughs> sing Beatles <laughs> yep. songs. But uh, it's actually why I'm glad I'm working for this for this uh, the lo local mystical show. This show is called the Awareness Shop. They're located in New Falls. And we have our original line of, uh, you know, Celtic deity statues. So we've got uh, about here's a sample. And these are all, you know, my original designs. Oh, based wow. on Classic mythological characters. It seems to be goddess Hecate. And uh, it incorporates a lot of, you know, significant mystical symbols. And, you know, I actually confer with the uh, shop owner named Lisa Stewart, and she is a psychic witch who communes with the deities. And, and Crowdy's she, hanging out with, wow. This is yeah. <laughs> yeah. More up my alley than Scott Tower. Talk about having to get approval. I have to get approval from the goddess. <laughs> so, but they're all like original statues based on these characters, but in the end, it comes down to me designing. So, um, you know, and they're very well received. This is a completely different you know, client base for me because, you know, they're not movie buffs or anything. They're, they're just into these, uh, you know, it's basically their faith. These are pagans who, you know, are mm -hmm. developed both these particular deities and uh, they really appreciate that I'm doing a lot of these characters for the first time, you know, old Irish um, deities from, you know, the classic mytholo mythology stuff. So. I, I uh, like that. There needs to be more of that stuff branching yeah. other people the fairy that's all over your shoulder yeah that is Thela. yeah i i did one of those a long time ago oh, really? <laughs> yeah well this is an interesting story because um i love this... that piece and i loved like making the wings for it because it came with like the clear mm -hmm. like glue to put into the wings tell this the oh, story because yeah. i really love that piece well she's actually the original character for an animated um, feature film concept that I was developing in the early 90s. Even before I got into all of this uh, brush good stuff, I was writing for animated features. And so this was a character I did for um, a screenplay called The Fairy's Tale. It's very much like a Disney party, you know, and uh, I, I got representation with a former Disney executive. And it was just like in the wake of The Little Mermaid. And I was like, we got to put songs in it. We got to put songs in it. So we sent the script to someone who was very popular at the time, um, pop singer Betty Gibson. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she loved the script. So we kind of signed her on. We're going to try to make this film and, you know, you could do the voice and stuff. And, but she did something that she took it a step further. She wrote a bunch of songs for it. So while we were trying to get the finance together, she was off in her own place in Long Island writing all these fairy songs. She wrote me 12 original songs for this project. And I was like gobsmacked, you know. I, <laughs> and she performed them for my, me and my team in Huntington, Long Island, a big white grand piano. And she belted out all these original songs, chewed from my script, you know. And I don't know why she did it. I mean, we had even gotten to a contract stage at that point. But um, and she recorded three of them. I have a demo tape with the original Debbie Gibson song for my script that most of the world has never heard, you know. And Unfortunately, the film didn't happen, so all that kind of went away. But um, I still try to get this project off the ground. It's one of the books that I recently, I wrote it as a children's novel, so this is available now. Oh, wow. It's okay. New title. Have you, have you tried shopping the movie idea lately? Is that hard? Like, how much does that suck trying to get a movie made? Oh, God. I went to hell with that. And... Uh, you know, you put together the best package you can. We had a team of artists, animators, a lot of main talent, you know, signed on to the voice roles and all of that. But you couldn't crack the nut back then. You know, animation was pretty much owned by Disney or maybe Spielberg. You know, so we got a lot of people looking at it. And uh, it's just, we couldn't get it off the ground. You know, it's just the way it goes. Um, it's funny because I also had a, another project about dragons called Dragon Star. She also got a, gained a lot of steam, and uh, my agent sent it to uh, Fantasy Illustrator Greg Hildebrandt, familiar with the Hildebrandt brothers. Mm -hmm. Greg Hildebrandt fell in love with that script, 
and he drew he drew a whole bunch of character designs for that project. So I've got like an original, I've got original Debbie Gibson songs, original <laughs> Greg Hildebrandt character designs that you know never got put to use, and it's just you know it's just, it's just kind of a sad story, unfortunately. But it's a great big fish story, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. How it got away. So I'm sure you were. Were you ever? Did you get to meet Harryhausen? Like either the Wonderfest he was at or any other shows or yeah, yeah. show him your work. I met Harry Alvin several times. Um actually first time was like when I was still in college. And when I was in high school, I made a film called Primeval Cage, which was basically, you know, Guanji fighting a Ceratosaurus, you know, um, in stop motion. And Harry Housen was at the thing um, um it, well it was a science fiction convention in New York City. And I, my brothers and I went there and we brought our stop motion models and we met him. And we have this wonderful photo of him holding my Guanji model, you know, and he had his Guanji model there at the time. So I got to hold my Guanji model up to his <laughs> one. And, you know, those photos are circulating on, you know, on my website. But it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, but other than that, I met him a couple of other times later in life at various conventions. And uh, but you know it didn't get extensive conversations with him. So mm-hmm. I guess I missed the opportunity. He didn't just swipe your models off the table and go, "This is crap," and throw it. <laughs> <up> the... <laughs> All right, no, but Harry Houghton actually owned a lot of my stuff. Um, really? Because Terry Fenton, Terry Fenton from Monster the Most, he actually licensed those characters from like three or four different Columbia movies and all the ones that I sculpted for him, he presented Harry Housen with a copy. So there are numerous video images of Harry Housen being interviewed and you see my models in the background. Well, that's you know? awesome. Yeah. And uh, one of the more recent Harry Housen uh, books came out and there's a great photograph of like cabinet filled with Harry Housen models. And there's this, the, the Cyclopean center from Golden Void of Sinbad. And right beside it is my collie model. So, you know, you know, that, that's, uh, that's an ultimate great. achievement there. Well, well, Joe, I got to say, I'm like our historian here because I've been in garage kid hobbies. Mm, late 80s, you know, early 90s. So a long mm-hmm. time. And, you know, I've known of you for a long time. I remember when Facella got going as well. Right. And. Um, but. So all the stuff you're telling us, I never knew. The Pee Wee's Playhouse, the Sesame Street. It's like, none of that knowledge is out there. So like, you must be like this humble, modest guy that just normally doesn't tell these stories. Yeah. Which is, you know, so this is great. It's like, I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. It's like, I, wow, this is cool. You know. I want to check out a book that I did get, I did publish um, called Pushing... Pushing Clay. This is the trade paperback version, which is unfortunately not still no longer available. But on my website, you can actually uh, order like for 10 bucks a PDF version, which is an updated version. And it does cover the early chapters, um, does cover, you know, how I got into it. So a lot of these stories you can find in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, as a matter of fact, That's reading, Jason. That's reading. It's not just looking at the pictures. I look at pictures. (laughs) That's the uh, photo of me with Ray Harryhausen and my Ah. brothers. And he's holding holding my brother's uh, caveman that my brother Tony did for a short film called The White Gazelle. That's the film, actually, that won the Academy Award that got him to Lucasfilm. And you can see me holding my little Guanji model. That's a riot. All right, right next to that, the foul... um... Oh, Falcara. Oh, that's so, another- so here's my connection with that. My mm-hmm. very first AFM article that I ever did was painting that for AFM. Right. Yeah, I've got that. I that, that, that. Yeah, and that's so they're always going to hold that special place in my heart. My first one was a Joe Ladotti model that I ever did for AFM. And it's like, well, I see it that- sitting back there over your shoulder, too. I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just well, he's a, that's also got a bit of a story. This is Falkaroth. Now, the short film that I made in, at, at, in film school 
It was called 10,000 Demons. And it was about a 16 year old boy who builds a, a model sort of like this and animates it and becomes sort of an extension of his, you know, personal problems and all that. <laughs> So then a guy said, you should write that into a novel. Or you should make it supernatural. And it's, oh, what a stupid idea. Then I spent 18 years turning it into a novel. So I wrote the novel, and that got officially published um, under several different names. But the most recent one is this version, 10,000 Demons. And it's about a young stop-motion animator who inadvertently conjures a demon through stop-motion animation. And it takes the form of his little puppet and goes rampaging through the you know, countryside. So it's kind of like Steven Spielberg meets Stranger mm -hmm. Things, you know, with Ray Harryhausen creatures. You know? Did so, any of this really happen? Like, it's with... like semi autobiographical. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girlfriend in, in high school. I didn't have that. So that's the fictitious part. <laughs> Does, how, how do you, you brought it up. How do you feel about Stranger Things and Steven Spielberg and that kind of resurgence of things we liked from you know the 70s and 80s coming mm -hmm. back is it like oh we missed our our chance or it makes you feel good to watch stuff and, and see kids like stuff that we liked when we were little i really like stranger things and i, I like those old movies and having written a story that takes place in that time period you know it, it brings it all back and it makes me envious that i can't get that made into a movie <laughs> keep trying but, you know yeah yeah. There's a lot more options these days for, for getting movies. I mean, you have Netflix, you have Amazon, you have all these other people looking for stuff, which is kind of Yeah, I'm always cool. refining the screenplays, and I do make the rounds with a lot of screenplay competitions. Pixelations has actually done pretty well at competitions and uh, didn't win any, but you get sort of get a score with each one, you know, semi-finalist, finalist. It was a top 10 finalist for one major competition. So, it, uh, you know... You keep plugging away, and the book hopefully may attract some attention. I'm sending a copy to Debbie Gibson. Who knows? Maybe she should come back. <laughs> Maybe she would. And <laughs> hey, I, what is the like? If you do want to make a movie, and I, this is kind of going off off track, or write a movie, or you have an idea, what's the first step? Is it screenplay? Like, hey, I got a screenplay. We'd, I'd like you to read it, or is it script, or is it, or a book? Like, you write the book. Well, it depends the direction you want to go. I mean, actually, it's interesting with me because I jump back and forth from book to screenplay, from screenplay back to book. So it depends which comes first. 10,000 Demons was a short film that became a novel. Pixelations was a screenplay that became, you know, a novelization. So, uh, yeah, I think generally for me, it starts with like a film concept and then I develop it. But in general, you start with a treatment. You come up with an idea. The treatment's like a short version of the story and then that graduates into a full screenplay and uh and then you spend your lifetime trying to sell it <laughs> oh, uh, man. do you paint models on your own like for for, for fun like mm -hmm. someone else's like you do yeah well i there are occasions when i made a pretty good living painting models when i was just barely making by um there's one guy named Robert Lesser who was a mad collector of everything imaginable. That he seems was, like a familiar name. Robert Lesser. Bob Lesser, yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, he's a legend. He passed away you know, fairly recently. But he was a collector of uh, pulp art paintings, and he, he amassed so many of them that he was able to publish books. And he had a museum show that went around the country with his pulp art. And he collected, like, toy robots, and he sold that collection for like millions of dollars and uh, finally he started collecting garage gifts and he became sort of like the you know the library of garage gifts that came out in that period because he was buying everything and he would hire me to paint them so you know i ended up painting i got an opportunity to paint all the great randy bowen jeff yeager john dennis models that were coming out you know but man he had a tiny studio apartment and Stuff. I mean, he could barely move. It was just so many, and I think there were a lot of people like that. You yeah, know, I, I know. I know one. <laughs> like, I used to have the same thing. Little tiny apartment in, the, in Chicago, stuff yeah. full of things. I've got a, 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 another customer friend uh, who lives in Chicago named Richard North, and he sounds like you know he's another guy from the mid to late seventies. And from what his description, he's like buying everything and. He, this little place must just be, you know, like a dragon sport of, of model kids. Yeah. And, yeah. 
This and it crazy. raises the question of what do you do with them when you pass on, right? We've kind of had that discussion recently around here. Yeah. With Scott, you know, Scott's not long for this world, I think. So we're trying to figure out how I'm going to steal all of his things. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Uh, but no, that is, we've had some people that we know very well pass away. So that's why we were talking about it. And it is, what do you do? Garage kids, buildups don't go for a lot of money. You yeah. know, it's kind of like, and you hate to see it. My dad always says, if you die, I'm just throwing it in the garbage. <laughs> when yeah. he's like, I'm coming to your house, dumpster, it's all gone. And I'm like, no. Well, that, that was the situation with Robert Lester. Unfortunately, he was very close friends to Daniel Faye of Sassy Satellite. And basically he, he let Daniel take all the things. and. You know, Dan was able to sell them. And I've got a similar arrangement with Dan now and his son. It's like, if I die, I want you to have all my stuff. Because, you know, I've got, two, you know, three wonderful siblings, but they wouldn't know what to do. Right. And, and I, uh, I, I think you really do have to find one person that's in the hobby and, like, kind of make a deal with them and be like, hey, when I go, I need you to yeah. come over here and help and my it's family. not jason walker yeah it's not scott johansson he'll it's rob not Blind. jason walker <laughs> we are at that age where sadly we're losing a lot of people. yeah yeah and it not gonna we lost, uh, we lost uh vincent bordonia yeah you no know, john tucky of course and then suddenly these models the molds where are the molds who has this you know who has that you know interesting I, times yeah, Interesting I just reposted images of a Raquel Welsh I spoke to John, and immediately everyone's asking, Where, is this available? Who has it? No, I can't even answer that. Who does have that? Scott, do you know? I don't know. Did he ever even get to produce that, or did that never get produced? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got a casting. Of it, so I've seen okay. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I've seen people who, uh, who built it. So Okay. Because I know yeah. that was very late on. Um, that the Karen Black uh, trilogy of terror, mm. um, and there was a Salem's Lot, right? Wasn't there a Salem's Lot kit you did for him too? Yeah, yeah. That and that was really uh, closer to the end, if I remember correctly. That was, yeah. We're getting close to the end at that point. It was really sad when uh, you know he developed a foot injury, and that just was rest. But, um, and then, the, you know, un unfortunately, the bad thing. Not to speak ill, but he didn't leave a he didn't leave a goodwill. Yeah, you know? and he had one relative. My understanding is he had one relative still lived in the Chicago area because John was from this area to begin with, and I think that's who they contacted. And I think they were basically yeah, just sell it all. I don't care, you know. Mm -hmm. And my memory of it was I don't think John cared for them too much, and you know, so. You know, I'll reiterate now to everybody watching, man, take care, take care of business because yeah. it's it just now I have a wife and stepkids and I did a whole spreadsheet inventory and everything that I will still link pictures to at some point. So at least when they go through it, they've got an idea what it is. Throw it on yeah. eBay, do what you want. Don't throw it away, you I know, am. and same thing. I got a bunch of Bowen superhero stuff, too. Which is a little easier for them to find value and stuff in. But it's like you say, you, you got to have someone that that's uh, willing, you know, to take that on for you. And that's, uh, yeah, you know, because that's a tough one. You know, and like you say, we've lost those guys. Mike Parks, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel Marquez. Mark, uh, Matt Clemens went, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then just a lot of collectors and stuff, too. Matt Clemens. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Sad. getting out of age. Is there something you've never sculpted that you're like, man, I really wish someone would ask me to do this, or like a dream project? Yeah, I don't know. At this point, you know, like last year, I did a, a bust of uh, Doctor Lau. Here, I had wanted to do a Doctor Lau figure almost from the very beginning. And I finally got, I finally just found the time to do one myself. <laughs> I love that. So it's got all the little figures on there. Yeah. That's awesome. If you want, Jason could send you some beard yeah, hair. I could send you beard hair if you want some. <laughs> and and uh, you can put some really human hair just on pull there. Pull it off my brush. This one's been attacked by my cat a few times, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you just yeah, have the, so one cat? Doc, I think was, 
my final bucket list figure and I can't really think really? what else. At this point, I'm like, well, I'd like to do another trog or you know, another whatever, but um, I don't know how many are left that I haven't done that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, I'm very fortunate because uh, I got to, I, I like to say, trove the gold of my past so many times, you know, because I had all these passions growing up and little things, you know. I was a, a little kid, I loved Kimba the White Line. I got to do a Kimba the White Line brush, you know. Um, when I was two years old, I said I went to the World's Fair. I saw those Jewish Sinclair dinosaurs. I sculpted the Triceratops a couple of years ago, you know, or Dr. Lau or Guanji, you know, it's kind of like again and again and again. Um, oh, I love to tell a story. Like I, I do female figures and I never got to see the movie Barbarella. But when I was a teenager, they reissued it with this beautiful Fritz. I think it's Frank Rosetta painting of Barbarella holding the gun. And I, you know, I love that painting. And then years later, Vincent Bordonia said, I want to do a Barbarella. I say, I've got the image I want to do. I got to sculpt the painting, you know? So just again and again and again, I, I, I kind of just sort of like panned for gold to my past and was able to pay the rent with it, you know? I think that's kind of everyone's dream to be able to pay the rent with stuff you like doing instead of yeah. doing what I'm doing right now, <laughs> getting swore at by kids every day. Um, I remember. It's a great story. When my brothers and I were little kids, you know, we big Harry Alvin fans, King Kong, and all that. A Sunday afternoon, my brothers and I, on this beautiful sunny day, were indoors watching King Kong for like the hundredth time. My mom was like, what are you guys doing indoors watching King Kong? It's such a beautiful day. She'd be outside riding the horses. And like years later, I, I could say, mom, you know how many times King Kong has paid my rent? <laughs> yeah. True. What, was she very, were you, what, was she supportive? Was she like, when you yeah, got my, going, or was it like, get a real job? Like my mom still to this day, she's like. I think uh, they were very supportive of what we did because things kind of happened so quickly. They never got around to like, you know, oh, you need to get a real job. I mean, literally, my brother Mike was working on a Spielberg film, of, you know, a year and a half after he left college. That's awesome. I was working on Broadway and she was Herman like a year out of college. I, I like to say like, you know, some people pursue their dreams. My dreams pursued me, you know, they tackled me and held me down, you know. <laughs> I didn't have a choice, and I never really had a choice to, like, pursue art because it pursued me, you know. Mm-hmm. Who would have fig- who figured I could ever make a living sculpting Ray Harryhausen models in King Kong, but, you know, I'm there still you are. doing it. That's awesome. Yeah. One of my uh, more favorite pieces of yours that you've done recently, when I say recently, I'm going to go last five, ten years because I don't know when you did it. <laughs> Sitting over your left shoulder, I can just see the top. That Stegosaurus, that king, is that that Skull Island uh, Stegosaurus? This is actually not. Or is that a different one? Um, okay. I was uh, approached by um, a company that wanted to do original um, dinosaur sculptures. I had actually been hired by um, Universal Studios to do uh, a maquette of a new version of. The Jurassic Park dinosaurs, and so I did these, you know, these maquettes of these uh, different figures. Um, that toy line didn't get picked up, but the producer was was kind enough to say you can, you know, just do what you want with it. So uh, I ended up sculpting these original dinosaurs. Of, uh... <clears throat> so these are like the closest things I've done to like more or less modern T Rexes, you know. So, and that Stegosaurus is one of those lines, but it did I, I re- that. Wait, could you show that again real quick? I like that. It has a nice classic old dinosaur mm-hmm. feel mixed with new. I really like that, especially in the mouth. Like, it, yeah. it, like oh man. So, <laughs> let me ask you, I'm going to ask you the dumb, I don't know anything questions. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that's true. You don't know anything. How long know. does it take you to sculpt something like that? Um, I mean, hour wise, maybe does it? When I was in the nineties, I was punching them out like one a week, I mean, crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I after that whole thing with the movies, I got really deep in debt, you know. The movies failed, and I was out of work, and I punched pulled a bunch of money in that. So I was like deep into credit card debt. So I had to figure out a way. The stop motion work wasn't really happening as much anymore. So I threw myself into the sculpting, and I ended up doing tons of female figures. 
which were popular at the time. I was meeting um, these, you know, B-movie actresses at the conventions, and they would want to do a model kit for their fans. And so I was, you know, the sculptures of Debbie Rashawn, Larissa McComas, and Tiffany Shepherds. And I did so many of them, I was able to pull myself out of debt in like three years, you know? So I ended up publishing a whole book just on the female figures. So, um, but I like the joke that I, I was like, I, I was young, I needed the money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I defy yeah. with the actors who have to like choose their parts because, you know, too much, you know, I was nudity, but, you know, I was getting thrown all these jobs of, you know, doing porn actors. For them. But no, no, that's not for me. I'm not going to step over that line. But are oh, you going to pay me how much? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Maybe. sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask a question when we're done, but not on cam, not on recording. But I will ask you a question when we're done. Um, so let me ask you this because you know we cover try to cover everything, mm-hmm. and obviously you saw our interview with Tony and his switch to switch digital. Um, yep. Have you thought about it? Are you working on it, or you just got too I, much else going on? Or what? It's actually funny because I had a conversation with Tony Cipriano uh, years back. Um, he was sort of out of work, looking to, you know, out of luck, so to speak. And I actually encouraged him to pursue doing digital work mm-hmm. because he had his connections to Disney and other things. And I, you know, for me, I didn't think it would help me because I might perfect the skill, but the clients I would work with would probably not have afforded it. But I said, look, you've got your foot in door with Disney. You should perfect, you know, learn that skill and they'll be able to hire you to do that. I don't know whether that's what gave him the impetus to learn but looking at his stuff now i'm like oh my god you know? i would go with that story and take credit for everything he's done up <laughs> to this point yeah yeah but i did attempt um i bought the zbrush program and i was dabbling with it a little bit but i don't know one of the problems there are so many people who do it so well and i i would have to start from scratch i don't yeah. think really that i would uh do you ever had a, a job go hey we need this digital and not get hired because you needed it digital or well, when I did a lot of my uh, bus banks and stuff, and occasionally a superhero I couldn't do, I would farm it out to a friend of mine named Ken Brown, who would either do the complete thing like Iron Man, or um, actually this is one of those busts that I didn't do. This is Ken Brown's Ultron. Uh-huh. So he did that work. Or maybe if it was a character that needed a particular kind of helmet, like Batman, he would do the helmet and maybe some of the... Uh, the arm, the um, the armor, and then I put it together and sculpt it. So there would be times when I would farm out stuff, you know, for digital. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I just figured with everyone going in that direction, maybe if I just stay put, I'll just crank out a living. That's I, a good, I, that's a good plan, actually. I, I, yeah, I like to joke that you know my next gig I'll be working at a Renaissance festival in a little tent sculpting <laughs> dinosaurs the old fashioned way. You know, the old. Technique. That's funny. Wait. Yeah. Hold on, where is it? I know it's here some. Wait. Oh, where'd it go? I have a little uh, dragon that I bought at a Renaissance festival that someone sculpted out of out of clay, and they're firing. I was gonna. That's funny. You could do that. Job. <laughs> yeah. You or you know, we'll get hit by an electronic. <coughs> yeah. That all, uh, and then you know, then I'll be the Jedi. I was just gonna say that too. The EMP will come, wipe out yeah. everyone's hard drive. No digital electricity, and you'll be sitting there. Open pre- clay. Does anyone know how to do that? <laughs> well, it's uh, you know, it, it's it's funny because there was an interview with Tony. Oh, that's funny. That's my Renaissance Fair dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the, the, I I remember seeing an interview with Tony that he did at Wonderfest a few years back with Terry Webb, and he says. Yeah, I'll never go digital. I always sculpt clay. I always sculpt clay. And then there he is doing digital. And to his credit, he did. I think he told me it took him a couple of years and a lot of swearing to learn ZBrush. I mean, it's not, you know, so it, it's not for everyone, I guess. But um, and, you know, a lot of people, I think, kind of get on us because, you know, we we push the digital stuff quite a bit. Um, only be, and they say, well, traditional sculptors are still they're inviable and, and yes they are what mm-hmm. i try to tell people is tony is a professional what i would call commercial sculptor and for what he does he needs to know it okay mm-hmm. and, and for what you do for what jeff yeager does um you don't need to know it 
and then you know keep going like you say if you can make a living um great you know uh i i think it's fantastic to have both you mm-hmm. know and and like you say with the bank you know to incorporate the digital stuff into a traditional sculpt is also you know mm-hmm. um i think you're going to see a lot more of that in the garage kit world especially you know? yeah I think one of the things also that I have some difficulties with the uh, the digital sculpting is first of all, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, there's no denying. Um, I I see it in my Facebook feed these incredible three D sculptors of you know female figures, and I'm like blown away. Mm-hmm. If just want to you know just give up and retire, but I don't really know what I'm looking at. Am I looking at a complete sculpture that someone did? Am I looking at someone that just converted an asset like Tony Cipriano was referring to? Mm-hmm. I, I was looking at a beautiful figure uh, this morning of a beautiful woman, you know, gorgeous pose and all the musculature and the skeleton is just so perfect. And I was thinking, I know it's a 3D, but is it a sculpture or was that a scan of a model, a living actress or something? I don't even know, you know, because you can do that too. You can scan the actual person and reduce it, maybe finesse it with ZBrush, but you know, we we can't tell. It's, it's actually kind of I, when I was working for the art asylum, um, we got the gig to do some um, Lord of the Rings food from um, Toy Biz had the license from the Lord of the Rings movies, and uh, I was working at Art Asylum with great sculptors like Paul Komoda, Eli Livingston, Jose Rodriguez, Ken Yusunami. And uh, they sent us several, you know, a, a number of Lord of the Rings figures that um, had to be hand sculpted. Because at the time, Gentle Giant, which was, you know, the company famous for, you know, digitally scanning and doing toys, they were in uh, New Zealand. They, they were scanning the actual actors from Lord of the Rings. But that was an 18 month shoot. So they weren't there for all of the actors. So we ended up having to hand sculpt Kate Blanchett. Um, as Galadriel, Sean Bean as Boromir, Christopher Lee as as uh, Saruman, and Paul Komodo was the head guy, as he was an you know incredible sculptor, and he gets the likeness perfect. So he's laboring to produce a perfect Christopher Lee and gets it approved by the studio, and a perfect Kate Blanchett and he has to get it approved by the studio. These toys come out, and you can buy a Gandalf, and it's Ian McKellen that's been scanned. And digitally produced, and you can get Saruman, which has been a hand sculpt with a beautiful Paul Komodo head, but you can't tell the difference, you know. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem. You can't really appreciate the Odyssey because you no longer know what you're looking at, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, like, yeah. let's see if you recognize this, Joe. You know what that is, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's been scanned. Now I don't know if they had to clean it up. Yeah. And printed, and. Right. Uh, one of our guests recently gave that to me, Dan Cherney. And uh, it's like, how long before this technology, this is what scares a lot of people, mm-hmm. it's into the home where it's affordable and good. Yeah. Okay. Um, to where, now, and there's a lot of good that can come of it. Hey, I have this model kit. I'm missing this hand. Oh, I have this hand. I'll scan it for you and print one for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and from that aspect of it, it's great. But then, you know, you open up the whole pirate door. And, you know, that's one of Tony's uh, things, too, is he doesn't want to sell STLs because once they're out there, there's no way to protect. And I don't blame him. It's like pirated music. You know, it can go mm-hmm. everywhere. You know, pirated movies. And there's no end to it. And once, you know, once that perfect Batman figure gets out there, everyone will have it. And no one will ever have to sculpt Batman again. You know? Right. And, you know, that's happening. Dinosaur. You can get free dinosaur figures. You know, SDL files. You never have to sculpt another T-Rex. You know? And again, yeah. like, you don't know the difference between something that was meticulously sculpted, even in a computer program, or if it's something someone bought and just, you know, revamped. You know, you just don't know anymore. And I'm sure there are artists out there spending incredible amounts of time with their incredible talent, but we ignore them because we just don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. We're not giving them the credit that's due because, oh, well, you know, that looks like the one to the other guy. Right. Well, and what I do, um, and I have an agreement with a couple of guys now, um, if someone says to me they see something that I've printed 
that I bought the file and they go, oh, you print that for me. And I go, yeah, I'll print it for you. But in the cost, I include the cost of the file. And mm-hmm. then I have that guy send me an invoice for the file again. Because if you buy the file once on like CG Trader, you can't buy it a second time. Ah. So, so these guys have to invoice me. So I make sure the sculptor gets paid. Like mm-hmm. for every one I print, he's going to get the cost of the file because okay. I want to make sure he gets. But not everyone's going to do that. Not yeah. everyone, you know, and that's that's the shame of it because they don't look at the big picture, you know. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's definitely a weird time. It's one of those, I don't know, steam engine printing press kind of times because there's so many. I'm an art teacher. I've been an art teacher for 25 years, and it's hard for me these days. Have you seen any of the AI generated art, the artificial intelligence art that's out there? Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. So all you have to do really is you go on, it's on discord and I'll, uh, people can kind of look it up if they want. You type in some words, the computer scours the internet of whatever your word, your keywords were, and it puts together an art image based on what it, you told it to do. And so <laughs> you don't even really have to. Like there's a, it's Sivis play. I forget what his real name is, but all I've been seeing him post on Facebook are all these Valkyries that he's oh. been doing. And all he's been doing is in the AR art generator is types in the words and the computer spits out an image for you. So oh you don't, God. you no longer have to know how to like paint, draw any of that stuff. You can tell the computer to do all of that for you. So we're mm-hmm. at a point where. And like with the scanning, you can say, well, I don't need to sculpt this guy. I can hook this scanner up. I don't know how to paint this picture. I can tell the computer to generate it for me. So there, yeah. like, there has to be a way for us, for you, for any of us, and for all of us to teach the joy of craft over the craft of making something mm-hmm. to get people to still want to do things with their hands. Yeah. And, and when I, even like my kids, we're, we do a, a two week clay project, right? They're done on the second day. They have, they're like, we're done. I have no attention span left. They're like, why are we doing this? And I'm like, you're doing this. The reason I make you do these things is so that you learn how to do a long-term project that you're, that you can focus your brain for two weeks on one thing, because Mm -hmm. that's how you are. It takes you time to like, in order to work at a job, you have to be able to focus on something and kids have no time. Like they can't focus. And like you said, with well, like our digital sculptor friend, he can crank that stuff out in, in seconds. And yeah. in the, it's, it's a weird point in time where it's going to, it's going to branch off into, like you said, if it, it's, you know, I was listening to a podcast podcast about lost technology and ancient, like the pyramids and how they did that. And everyone's like, well, how could we forget? And you just yeah. said it earlier. Like if everyone switches over to digital and there is that problem where no one, everyone, we lose that information or that power to remember that no one's going to know how to do it. Like it's going to be a lost thing. And it's, it's one of those weird point in times where everything's going to be different in the next 10 years. And we may not live to see it, but it's going to go away. And I want people to still make things with their hands. And it's, it's yeah. Even if it's a stupid model kit, like we do, like is you're still making something and it's, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, I, I would look at the AI generated art. It's scary. It's terrifying what can be done by just typing words. And, yeah. Yeah. and like, I think it was the first, I forget where it was, but an AI generated art piece took home the top prize at some art show. Out I, think, uh, I, was like, yeah. I was like, well, okay. here we go. Like, you don't even need to like go to like, whatever it's, it's weird, but. Hey, don't forget. And Joe and I probably more so than you, because you're a youngster. <laughs> Ten years we, young. we grew up with teachers telling us, no, you can't use a calculator. You're not always going to have a calculator with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> but and and just to show you, Joe, the difference is uh, this knucklehead and I went out one day for pizza, and he's trying to figure the tip at 20%. And yeah. I, I'm telling him, just leave this much. And he's like, well, let me figure it. Let me figure it. Let me figure it. And I'm like, it's this much. So he comes back like five cents different. And he's like throwing it in my face. I'm like, dude, come on. Really? I have you're a learning a, You're disability. a teacher 
and you Scott can't figure twenty percent in your time. head. Okay, but yeah, I mean that's you know that's where it is. Um, I placed in the eighth grade math in college. It's not my fault. I, you're probably still placing in the eighth grade math. <laughs> lower, actually, lower. But and and Joe probably remembers this, and maybe Jason, you had to, but you you do multiplication and you do these speed tests where they give you a sheet and you'd have to do it and memorize it. Kids don't memorize that anymore. No, because yeah. you know why? When I was a kid in the back of the max math textbook, they had that chart that showed you the times table. So I would always skip back and look back there and try to figure it right. out. Yeah. We don't remember it. We don't remember phone numbers anymore. Oh no. No. Nope. Oh no. I used to remember phone numbers like crazy too. Yep. Yeah. Joe, were you on the Gremlins list at all? Were you back then, like the Gremlins in the Garage website way back when? Were you a Gremlin guy? I think I had some stuff up there. Okay. I don't think that active on it. But uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, so much of my stuff is out there. It always it inevitably gets everywhere anyway. You know? How often do you get to Wonderfest? Is it a. Rare? I've only been to Wonderfest twice because it does it, but my cat is about to knock off my photo figure. Hold on a second. Get her swinging around by her tail. Stop it. What? <laughs> Send the letters to Jason Walker. At <laughs> yeah. I've been to Wonderfest twice. Once was actually the year that Harry helped me out. But that must have been like 2002, I guess. Or, oh, no, 2000. Yeah, it was about like 2002, 2003. And then I, I did it again um, in like 2012. So, but it's kind of a hassle, especially where I am now. But you need to trip into the city and then in the airport. Yeah, like that. definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a blast last time. I drove down with Paul Gill and Vince Wardell. And uh, yeah, 12 hour drive with two guys in a, in a van. <laughs> At least you weren't tied up in the van. That's a bad van, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, look, if you're not going to go, you know, I better tell you, Paul's a Bigfoot believer. So, uh, uh, you know, there, there's, there's some tinfoil hat stuff going there. I'm just, I'm just. All right, Joe, are you, are you a Bigfoot believer or non-believer? I pretty much believe. Although I. Hey, I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm like, I mean, I believe in fairies. So I think all oh, they're probably fairies. All right. <laughs> now we're talking. You just lost Scott, but you got you gained points with all me. Right, all right, it, please tell me the Earth is round. At least give me that. At least I'm a, ra- a round Earth. Is right. Okay, I'm, all right. Round. I, I, I live not far from a you know place known for you know white white Hall, New York is a is a you know popular spot for Bigfoot sightings. So. Uh, my brother Mike used to live in uh, Kinderhook, which was famous for its wolf, for its like dog man site. Uh, yeah. Scott yeah. doesn't know about any of these cryptids, so no, no, I'm, I'm interested, um, but Scott, he doesn't know. He's lost. He's already out. He no, once out. I found out the Loch Ness monster was fake, yeah. that that photo Who's was that? faked all those years ago, it oh, just yeah. ruined my faith. Yeah. That photo was fake. Oh man! So you got any projects you want to plug coming up? Something you want to make sure everyone sees? I saw you got a Hydra coming out with somebody. It's coming out with from Saturn Limited. That's my third Hydra. My cat's all over my table over here. My cat was chewing on Doctor Lau. No. <laughs> so, yeah, the Hydra has just been literally sent out a couple of days ago. So Saturn Limited is coming out with that. Um, what else am I doing? I did a uh, moon calf. From First Men in the Moon, and Scott Kelly has that underway. Um, I'm producing an audio book of Pixelation, which will be out later in the year or early next. Um, so for those people who don't read books, they can listen to that. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. I never know if we've got more daily statues coming out. And, uh, and uh, yeah. I never know. I, I, I live my life three months at a time. I never know. <laughs> That's the best way to do it, I think. Yeah. Which, which means you're still available to hire if someone wants to get a hold of you. And Yeah, cool. if someone does want to get a hold of you, best place? Email? Uh, Joeladati.com. Just J-O-E-L-A-U-D-A-T-I. Spell it right. You'll, you'll get to my website. Just Google it. You'll find the website. And I'm also on Facebook. And uh, if you want to check out the deity statutes of the ad, the 
um, website is gotdeity.com, G-O-T-D-E-I-T-Y.com, one word. That'll take you to the site where all these uh, Celtic and pagan statues are being sold. Cool. I'll, I'll link it here. We'll have all this links down below for people to follow and, you know, support Joe. Cool. Dude, this was amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. This was, I really enjoyed it. We're going to have you back again and do more of this. Like, this yeah. is fantastic. Thank you, yeah. Joe. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. Good night, both of you. Thank All you. Right. Take care, sir. That's our like. I'll wait till you're done drinking. Why? I'm not done. I guess I am. It's empty. Okay. Joe Ladotti, everyone. Fantastic. Like, really cool. Pee wee. A pee wee connection. I can't even believe it. Uh, mm-hmm. awesome. Please follow all the links. Scott, what'd you think? I loved it. I loved how he had to empty his shelf as he yeah. was talking to us, <laughs> and, and then. And then his cat came in and said, yeah, I'm going to have a ball. And uh, <laughs> Joe's like, you can see Joe watching, like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Yeah. So, um, no, thank you, Joe, for coming out. We really, really appreciate it. And anytime I'd love to have him back, tell more stories. And wow. Really good. Uh, emails, voicemails and corrections. I think we have one correction. I, I think last time I said, the Norris bust was the fourth in the series. And I think Paul corrected me in the comments and said, it's the third. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So I want to be sure. Unless it's the fifth and we just messed up. again. <laughs> yeah. I messed up again. Whatever. Let me, let me I it's will, not like he's not selling them for crying out loud. Let me, uh, so. I will double check that. Correct. I was just reading. Number three. You're correct. Number three in the thing line. CG blade voicemail. It's, uh, not that long. Here we go. Hey, this is uh, Mr. CG, Scott. Please do not go to sleep. I got a question for you. Don't go to sleep, Scott. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm sorry I'm going to miss the barbecue, guys. I wish I was another Ohioan, moron Ohioan, <laughs> coming to your barbecue. But unfortunately, um, we uh, we have somebody with cancer in the family, and Jackie can't leave. And uh, uh, she's being... Uh, She's given the role of caretaker now, and uh, unfortunately, um, she can't uh, she can't travel uh, long distances, and I'm not allowed to drive. So probably a good thing. Uh, um, with that being said, um, I wish I could be there. I hope you guys have a lot of fun, and um, uh, I'd love to chit chat and take a look at all your stuff. We missed so, you. Um, Anywho, with that being said, Scott, um, I know you got a lot of doubles of models, and I'm looking for the ghost of Castel Murray. Is that the way you say it? Castel Murray? Castel Murray? I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows. But if you have a double of that, would you please let me know if you would sell one of them? Uh, I'm looking to complete the uh, the castle uh, skeleton, the for, uh, Forgotten Prisoner, and there's a piece now that goes between those two kits and makes those two kits complete. So um, 
there's an add-on piece for those that I'm looking for, and everything I see on eBay is like an extreme amount of money. So um, if you are, uh, if you would be nice enough to let one go, or you guys know anybody that uh, has one, let me know, and um, uh, we'll see what we can do. See if we can make a deal. Thanks, guys, and take care. Bye. All right. It has turned into radio tradio. Remember those radio yeah. shows where people would call in and be like, "I have a yeah. lawnmower for sale." Scott, do yeah. you have an extra ghost? I don't even have one. Wow. Um, okay. I was not a. It's just it didn't do anything for me, so I never got it. Okay. Um. So if anyone out there has an extra ghost of anyone Castell, has one that wants to let one go reasonable, yeah. uh, get a hold of CG. CG Blade. is looking for one. I know uh, Dan was going to try to see if he could locate one. Yeah. I got uh, confused. He had the prisoner, and I'm like, oh, and I'm like, no, he wanted the ghost. So, yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, well, that would be great if he. I forgot uh, to push buttons during this episode. Well, needs a button. Oh well, we need. We need to. Oh well, well gets a button. We'll get well a button. Yeah, we gotta get well um, a button. Uh, so, voicemail phone number, real quick: seven zero eight eight one six forty two ninety nine. If you want to call us, leave us a shorter voicemail than a minute. That was almost two minutes, CG. Almost got cut. Uh, we're looking for 15 to 30 seconds. That's right. And if you would like to go to the CG Blade Discord, go to the Model Club Discord. And uh... <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, don't forget our Discord channel. I need to get a thing for that as well. But the Discord thing, ugh, I, get, I was at the Demo Derby on uh, Saturday night. Good picture of mm -hmm. me there. I put up on Discord. Uh, the Demo Derby was awesome. Holy cow. One of the best ones I've ever been to. It was fantastic. Uh, but again, email modelclubtv at gmail.com. If you want to send us an email, that's where you send it. Modelclubtv at gmail.com. Our first email comes from the West Coast, Phil. Kupka. So we had dueling parties on the same day. Yeah. And Mark Worthing was supposed to send in some sort of video to me of this thing. Yeah. I don't think he got our, to that. Our correspondent said he was going to send us, he was going to be like a roving reporter. I don't have that. So, but Phil has sent in something. I want to read this. He, he roved it right out. Okay. Right they out. were too busy airsoft. I know. I looked fun. Blowing up heads and stuff. That so. looked awesome. Uh, hi, guys. Judging by David Horvath's post on Facebook, it looks like you all had a great time at your first Chicago area gathering. Congratulations on organizing and getting a bunch of fellow modelers together. I'm going to stop right there. This was Phil's idea a long time ago, trying to talk us into doing one here. So we want to thank Phil for pushing us into doing that, and I think it was a great idea. We'll see what happens, but we do want to do it again. Here in the Portland, Oregon area, we had our 17th Swamp Meet on Saturday, September 17th also. It all started back in 2015 when our first gathering included four of us. We beat that. We got more than four and we had like, Brian had to bow out like, a couple other people had to bow out due to help. Jamie food. had to bow out. Yeah. yeah. Some, so I, I would have liked to get bigger, more local people. Yeah. I don't know how many there are. That's the thing. Um, oh, but we did see. I have an update after that. That reminds me about something. Okay. Uh, our first gathering included four of us with each new gathering. Our numbers grew word got out, uh, except for the couple of gatherings we attempted during the curse of COVID. We had as many as 40 attendees. I've attached a group photo from the recent event, and I wanted to get everyone who attended in a shot, but not everyone arrived in time. This photo is only missing four of the late attendees. As you focus in on those snarling faces, you may, may recognize a few of them. Where Along is Phil in that photo? Did you see Phil in that photo, or maybe he mm, took the photo? He might have taken it. I, gotta, I can't. Mine's a little thumbnail right now. I can't, okay. I don't see it on the screen. If you can find Phil, it's like, where's Waldo? Where's Phil? Right. Uh, so, along, uh, unless Rod he's Hickey. behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rod Hickey, I saw on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Brokaw, Brad Worley. What if Mark Worthing ruined the whole thing? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, my friend Kurt Krause was there. No, so. yeah, Kurt probably ruined it. Uh, along with schmoozing about the hobby and some... <laughs> Some bring along some figure kits that they had recently built. Also some brought items to sell or trade. And of course, there's an overabundance of food and drink. I hope the modelers in your area will continue meeting, grow in numbers, and enjoy the camaraderie we share in this great model hobby. Phil, 
One of the favorite spots our groups like to meet is at a guy is a guy's house that has one of the largest collections of figure kits, along with a huge collection of hot toys and awesome action figures that I know of. I'll send you a couple separate emails with photos of his collection, which you may share on Model Club TV. And I have that. I'm gonna make a little montage video here. So we'll come back right after that. But it is Mike Keller. And holy crap. I thought I had a lot of IKEA cabinets. This guy's got me beat. I have not, he's got more than I do, which is crazy. So enjoy this little montage of Mike Keller's collection and the swamp meat out in Portland, Oregon area. Scott, what'd you think? That's some, that's a collection. Yeah, that was some crazy stuff. <laughs> that's uh, a collection. Bill sent wow. me that email as well. And uh, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. Very cool. Uh, that reminds me, we had a conversation at our barbecue, our cookout. We did. About, it was, I don't know if you were there. No, I wasn't there. It was my house. But I, I don't was. remember who I was talking to, but we were talking about IPMS. Were you there for that part? I think so, yeah. And I looked up our our area IPMS club, and it meant it actually meets in my town, but it doesn't. It moved over to the i. The guy got back to me, so it's on the third Friday of the or last Friday of the month, which I think or no third or last. But it meets at the Hobby Town in Orland, the okay. IPMS show. So club. So I'm gonna get back with that guy, and I might go to one if you, maybe you want to go as well. Oh yeah, be great. Maybe they'll let you cook. You gotta ruin everything. Oh, I ruined everything. You ruined my deck. <laughs> All right. And our final email, which I've been alluding to this entire episode, it's stuck in my craw. And I know he's just playing. Uh, from Robert Trock. Throughout all 50 plus episodes of Model Club TV, I have seen pics of lots of buildups, heard hours of advice, much talking about supposed on the bench projects, even from Scott. More advice, history of the hobby, interviews, more advice, huge chunks of blabber about 3D printing, 
and yet never seen anyone actually building and painting anything in real time. What is this? Some kind of CGI-generated Peter Jackson marathon or something? We did get to see some kind of mocap video of Johansson rotocasting, I guess. So there's that. How about a comedic live segment called Johansson's Jaunt with a paintbrush done in real time? Or maybe it's Walker Wanks, where Jason shows us in real time where he repairs kits that have left the table and hit the floor. <laughs> Get on it. That, yeah, that's very close to the truth. So, I will address that. <laughs> Can't wait. This show has never meant to be a live modeling show. Ever. It was never conceived that way. This was always a promote the hobby and show what's out there. There are so many places you can go to watch live model building. Um, Roy sent me a good one. I'll link it down below. I forgot it off the top of my head. I subscribed to that guy. I'll go and find it um, on Twitch. But there's tons. And I was doing my own channel at the time. Still am. But I'm going to try and move that over there. You got Steve doing stuff. You got uh, Figure Kit Garage doing stuff. There's other people doing things. And this show, I mean, it brings it's a sensitive subject to me because... I've always been a builder always. And it wasn't until recently. And this is kind of my question to the audience. And since we don't have a giveaway this week, um, talk about this in the comments. How do you stay motivated when you have life come at you to keep building stuff? They watch us. I mean, besides, well, maybe we are, if we're motivating people, which I think we have, but I got to get motivated. I, I, I think you got to get motivated. I got something sitting upstairs for 20 years and you're worried about getting motivated. Well, I do too. Actually, I have some stuff that's been here that long, but I noticed mine took a hit. And this is, I think when I bought a house, I was able to build and kind of paint regularly until I bought this house. And it's like every time I have to do, like, I want to sit down, something happens. You have to have to mow the lawn. You have to, if something breaks, you got to fix that. You got to do this. So it's like something's always in the way. And I want to like, what are people's tips on like staying on the workbench? Like, how do you keep. And I don't have any tips because I have the same problem. I know. I know. In that. Okay. You know, whatever. Like you say, life throws at you. But yours, you've always said is more, you don't want to screw up a kid. Well, that, and there's the OCD of all your ducks have to be in a row. So it's like, oh, I got to pay bills. All right, so I got to pay bills tonight. Can't do nothing tonight because tonight's pay bills night. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll get up there and work on that big galuna so I can get it molded and cast. And then inevitably tomorrow I'll go to work. I'll come home. I'll be tired. I don't feel like doing anything. So it's always something. Saturday, my plan was to um, go out and help Joanne uh, clean the spare garage, get the pool pump and stuff in for the winter, you mm-hmm. know, and get going. I get a call from one of the kids. There's a car issue. I have to go look at the car. My buddy Rick comes over. We're out there till 830 at night repairing the car. Now I can barely move the next day. So that's <laughs> shot. So, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's always something, you know, and it's, um, and that's the same with, and I think it, also with my new position at work, I get my ass kicked a little bit more than I was. And I come home angry a lot of times. And I really like, I build a lot of things, but I haven't painted a lot of things. And I don't know if it's the, the building part is more cathartic. Keep looking at Rexy. Oh, it's more cathartic a little bit. I don't know. I, but I have in the time I've done four AFM articles since we've been doing this show. Um, so that I, then I've done some other buildups for other people. But I just haven't. I've done Psycho Goreman. I did the Agent Carter for display. Like I've done stuff. But I, yeah, I it's it's taken a serious hit here in the last few years, and it bothers me. I don't. I've never been one to not be able to sit here and paint, and I don't want to get into that rut. So, if people have advice, what is your advice to keep like keep active? How do you motivate yourself when there's just when life hits you? It's just it sucks sometimes. Well, I understand the guys that do it for a living. Yeah, if I was retired and this is all I did. Yeah, if this was all I did. You have to treat it like a job. You have to go downstairs or you have to go to your studio or whatever. And you have to discipline yourself and say, this is what I'm going to do. 
And even then, I'm, I'm thinking if you're home, that's got to be difficult. But yeah, it is. When I that's why I hated online COVID teaching. I like going to work. I don't like sitting in a place that's my house. I like my house separate, except here for this different. But real jobs, I don't want to be here for. Man. Yeah. So I still haven't printed on my Jupiter. <laughs> really? See? Really? Mine, mine, I'm waiting. Mine broke twice. I, I'm waiting for parts. So people who got Jupiters, check yours to see if your paint is coming off your vat with resin. Here. Mine was Robert, leaking. Robert Truck, you want a how to? Here. How to cure a how to cure a hollow print. So here's my Gilla Gorilla. Here's your freaking UV light. You turn it on, you stick it in the hole that you left there. And can you see the light moving around in there? You do that for about a minute. Okay. And uh you can see the light and that cures the inside. So there you go. There's your how-to video track. Well Get done. Well done. Okay. And we can look for Scott's uh, stains all over his house with yeah. the UV light. I bet you I could go to the deck and if it picks up grease, <laughs> it's going to look like I got a leopard like a murder scene. Or like... <laughs> yeah. But little... yeah, I, oh man, I. Wait, I'm out of focus again. There we go. Okay. I want to do more painting. It's just, uh, it's. The other thing I will say, and I don't want to sound like, I don't know how to say this. This show has eaten up the time that I probably would have spent painting. Uh, it, it may not look like we spend a lot of time on this, but it's usually like, it's an hour. Like we record what? Three hours. We did an interview. Like even tonight, we've been sitting here since it's been two hours that we've been working on this tonight. And, and then we did the interview with Joe. And that was a couple hours of time. And then I have to edit the next day. And sometimes editing takes a couple days because of stuff happening. And so that's time I would have spent building models. And I do the show instead. So the little bit of time I do get away, I spend on this, which I don't know. I like doing the show. And if it inspires other people to do it, great. Anyway, that's episode 55. Smash that like button. Even if you hate us, please like that show. We're getting close. Last I checked, 661? Did I say 662? Yeah, let's not get stuck on 666. Oh, either. let's go okay. for 666. Ooh. Should we give out a special prize to the subscriber 666? How will we even know who that is? I don't know. We got to figure that out. I don't know. If I can find a way, I will. Actually, I will. I know. I think I can. Anyway. Uh, again, email modelclubtv at gmail.com send us a hate hateful message a loveful message and then and uh voicemail number we'll have giveaways next time for yeah, sure we will for sure and, and those that won today congratulations and great uh gallery coming up again a lot of stuff in it so enjoy everyone we'll talk to you later oh chiller Make sure if you're going to do the chiller contest, get over there, support the chiller model contest. And we're going to have a those... producer and can send something. Uh, we have an address, get a hold of us. We can give you the address yep. to send it to. It's a U.S. address. So you don't have to worry about sending to Scotty in Canada. But uh, I think I got him a donation from uh, Mark Worthling. Um and I'll have information for the chiller contest down in the uh, description as well. So Right. But uh, yeah, help those guys out. That's coming up. Yep. It's coming up. All right. See you, everybody. Take care. Bye.